When Naruto Uzumaki learned the multiple shadow clones technique from the Scroll of Seals, two paths were laid before him. One was the path of a loyal shinobi of Konohagakure, and, eventually, the title of Hokage. The other path, that of a conqueror. He chooses the second, or the logical illogical progression of a kid being able to create an army on demand what's up guys. It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If Naruto Conquered the Shinobi World with Shadow Clones Army? Part 1. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. So do all three of you understand the test? Kakashi Hitaki grinned down at the three genin from beneath his mask, but the way he allowed his eye to crinkle made it obvious he was smiling. By the way the three genin looked at him nervously, some more than others, and how their eyes glanced to the bells suspended in the air, he figured they did. Alright then. He secured them at his waist and reached into one of the pockets on his vest. You have until sunset. He would have laughed at their frightened expression as his hand reached in and drew out his book but chose not to. It was much harder than he thought when all three nearly fell on the ground from shock. Begin when you feel you're ready. The test already started. Then let me show you the might of my forces. Naruto Uzumaki stepped forward almost immediately, and Kakashi considered it almost disappointing. He had wanted to see what the other two would do, but the Uzumaki would probably be entertaining enough. He would beat him, throw him in the forest, and hunt for the rest of his potential teammates. Forces? Sakura Haruno, the only civilian on the team, looked confused for a moment as Naruto stepped forward before she turned to Sasuke. What is the idiot talking about saw Dash? It was as far as she got before she realized Sasuke was moving back with almost fear on his face, his black eyes turned red with two tomo in each spinning around his pupil. His reaction was enough for Sakura to follow him. In part, it was to protect herself from facing Kakashi alone or being drawn into the dead last beating, and in equal parts it was to get some time alone to speak with her crush on how they would manage to get the two bells and pass. Naruto was naturally destined to fail. Prepare to bow before the might of my glorious legion. Naruto's hands moved to a simple seal on the armor he wore on his wrist. Suffer the fate of all enemies to my glorious empire. Two things appeared in his hands then. One was a strange sword, a short one that was nothing like something Sakura had ever seen. It looked more like a large knife made to decorate a wall. In his other hand, actually strapped to his arm, was a large shield. It was massive, curved slightly, and it was colored a simple, and bright, orange. Beneath a metal bump, placed in the middle of the shield, was a red swirl. There's one of you. Kakashi felt he needed to make the obvious statement. He did not expect to hear laughter erupt from the potential genin in front of him. He also noted that the same potential genin was now dressed differently. He was covered in armor of various shades of orange in addition to an orange cape hanging from his shoulders, attached there by two red swirls that acted as fasteners. Armor was placed on his arm, covered his chest and stomach with one piece and shoulders with another layer placed on top. The lower half of his legs was covered by metal armor but he kept his sandals on. Beneath the orange armor, the jonin noticed a black shirt or tunic that extended down past his waist and covered most of his exposed legs. From the waist down, strands of leather and metal formed a layer of protection that didn't impede the movement of his legs. It was the helmet he took note of the most, the same color as the armor, and from it sprouted a solid black plume. You are foolish to not understand the glory that is my army. Naruto placed his sword in a sheath at his side, something Kakashi just noticed and wanted to hit himself for missing such a detail, and drove the shield into the ground in front of him. The potential genin crossed his fingers for the seal of a jutsu the jonin knew to be beyond most shinobi who had earned the rank of jonin. Know it now Kakashi Hitaki. Tremble and bow before the might of my glorious orange legion. Multiple shadow clone jutsu. Oh yeah. Kakashi once again felt like hitting himself. He had forgotten the Uzumaki had learned the Kenjutsu from the Hokage, 
the old man was going a bit crazy in his old age to entrust such a dangerous techni, Kakashi's brain temporarily stopped working as his eyes took in the scene. Naruto stood before hundreds, if not a thousand, clones. All were similarly armed to him, but he noticed that most of their armor was slightly less decorative and lacked the cape. The helmet of the summoned clones also lacked the plume and instead bore a red swirl on the forehead. Behold my glorious army. Behold the might of the Uzumaki Empire, it shall bring forth. Behold the mighty Orange Legion. As Naruto shouted out his words, he drew the shield up from the ground and returned the sword he wielded to his hand. All of the clones he had created followed his actions as he threw his hands out at his sides. Behold power. So? Kakashi decided to not let the Uzumaki throw him off his balance any more than he already had. He was a jonin. The boy in front of him wasn't even a genin no matter what he did or could do. Or how he could randomly make armor and weapons appear. Or how he had the ability to make hundreds of shadow clones, all armed like he was. Or how he was currently barking orders and creating formations out of them. Legion on me. Who? Naruto raised his sword into the air with his order, and immediately dozens of the waiting clones moved around him with a shout. They formed a solid line of steel with their shields held at the ready, ten closed across the distance. The formation stretched ten roars back, with Naruto in the center. The hundreds of remaining clones marched around him, encircling the battlefield in a formation with their backs to the forest. A detachment of eighty or so clones already were marching into the forest with a clone dressed similarly to Naruto at the head. The Jonin also noted that they headed in the general direction Sasuke had fled with Sakura. Ready artillery. Who? His order was followed, the sword stabbed into the ground as instead each and every clone held their hand out and in a puff of smoke a spear appeared. Naruto was no different, his weapon was identical to those of the clones and appeared in an identical manner as Kakashi chose this moment to make some distance between him and Naruto's orange legion. Fire. Who? Approximately 100 of the spears flew through the air and Kakashi made a note of the multiple explosive tags sailing behind each. I'm going to hate this test. Where are we going? Sakura chased after Sasuke as he seemed on a mad dash to escape the training ground. Away from that army. Sasuke shouted back to her, actually responding at last as he came to a stop, resting against a tree as he allowed his breath to escape him in pants. He's going to do something Lee Dash, the battlefield they had fled from erupted after a shout. Like that. Sasuke finished his sentence and took note of their surroundings with his changed eyes. He always does that first. Wait, you've seen him use that technique? When? It seemed like that was a bad question to ask, as Sasuke's eyes turned alit with an inferno of uncontrollable fury. It was so intense that Sakura took a step back in blind panic from the object of her affection. Even then his eyes seemed to pierce through her soul and stare back at the Uzumaki who was battling a jonin with an army. When he conquered the Uchiha district for no damn reason. Flashback to the day the Orange Legion conquered the Uchiha district for no damn reason. What do you think you're doing near my house, Dobe? He had noticed him the moment the blonde had stepped onto the streets. An instinctive nagging at the back of his mind to confront the dead last of the academy before he could do anything to the empty place he called home. He wouldn't tolerate the blonde moron doing anything to damage the constant representation of his vengeance the entire district represented. He was glad he had decided to stop him at the border of the district, not letting him get very far at all. The blonde hadn't moved past the border anyway so it wasn't like he needed to move from his spot on the wall. He must have wanted him to find him. If he challenges me to a costume contest I'm killing him. Ah, Achiha. You're just the man I wanted to see right now. Naruto was dressed in ridiculous orange armor with an equally ridiculous helmet under his arm and cape over his shoulders. The other was currently holding onto the hilt of his sword at his waist. I have an offer for you. His smile was pure and held no disguised intentions and neither did his crystal clear blue eyes. Surrender your land to the glorious Uzumaki Empire or face my orange legion in war. The strength of arms will show the victor where the strength of wits and words fail. The kid had snapped it seemed or was trying to be funny. Either way Sasuke snorted. It was the closest he would get to a laugh at the outright terrible joke he had just heard from the blonde. The idea of him breaking under the stress of being a failure was also amusing enough to warrant it. 
Maybe now he would finally learn to shut up and get out of his hair with his constant challenges. The sooner the better for the Uchiha. Get off my land Dobe. Sasuke kicked off the wall he was leaning against as he crossed his arms over his chest. Cold black eyes looked into blue ones and, for some strange reason, he felt that something was off about the Uzumaki in front of him. I don't feel like wasting time with you today. Now leave before I change my mind and use you for my target practice. I see you've made your choice. Naruto's eyes had hardened. They still screamed of their honest intentions through. He took a moment before he seemed to nod to himself and rose his hand off of his sword and up to chest level. The Orange Legion is merciful so I will allow you the option to surrender until dawn. Get lost already. Shuriken filled one hand and cold black eyes glared at the Uzumaki before him. I don't want to waste my shuriken on you. To the victor go the spoils then my friend. His index and middle finger were raised with his thumb tucked into his palm. Sasuke immediately recognized it as the seal of confrontation. Prepare yourself for war my foe. He vanished in a swirl of leaves. Damn irritation. Sasuke put his hands in his pocket and made his way back to his house. He was intent to ignore the Uzumaki and his entire mad spiel from a few moments ago. He's lucky I don't feel like throwing him off myself. Legion. Naruto's voice reached him from far off down the street and with an irritated sigh Sasuke turned around and froze at the sight behind him. It was as unbelievable as it was believable as he saw Naruto's orange legion and realized something. He understood what he had felt was off with the Uzumaki when they had briefly talked. His chakra wasn't pouring out of him like always. It was almost muted and now he knew why. Hundreds of identical blondes stood behind Naruto and the Uzumaki stood at the head of the entire army. His helmet was not yet on as his crystal clear blue eyes swept over the gathered soldiers of his orange legion, as he seemed to look for any flaws but a grin broke out over his face soon enough. He slammed his fist into the armor he wore on his chest, resting above his heart as the army moved on its feet, eager to begin the night's battle it seemed. Present yourselves for your centurion. Three clones dressed more like the original blonde marched out of the lines and stood in a solid row, spaced apart with their helmets under their arms. One had barked the order and the clones went ramrod straight. Sasuke noticed the clones that stood before Naruto each had a helmet with a different emblem in the swirl dotting the forehead. One, two, and three. The plume that sprouted from it was also bright red like the swirl symbol on their helmets. Naruto's eyes looked over the three for a moment before his eyes changed and addressed the clones behind them. Before our Grand Legion stands the waste of a once glorious and prosperous land. Naruto's voice wasn't loud but carried over the entirety of the clones assembled before him. Before us stands the land that was once great and civilized now turned to the dogs because of one savage who dared to call himself great once. What stands before us is the ruins he has created and the madness he drives to create in the world that belongs not to him but to me. You stand here as soldiers of my orange legion and soldiers of my glorious Uzumaki empire. Who? Shields were banged on the ground to produce a great noise. You stand here as a beacon of order, of civilization itself in these lands. Who? The beating intensified. What the hell is going on? While we are here we are the empire we all so proudly serve. We are a proud civilization. We are order. We are Uzumaki. Who? It became nearly deafening to the Uchiha. Prepare to march. On your centurion. Yes sir. Ready your arms. The three unique clones, Centurion Sasuke would guess from Naruto's brief speech, shouted out the order as one as they each placed on their helmets. Before they turned around they each did something identical to what Naruto had done bringing their fist up to their chest and striking their hearts. Naruto returned with the same before all four turned around, three to the army and one to the sole opponent standing against them. Pray for glory men. Naruto rolled his neck as he drew up his shield and readied his sword. Form ranks. Who? Shields were lifted and swords were drawn as one. The clones seamlessly began a synchronized step forward as Naruto was seamlessly placed at the head of the formation. This is insane. Sasuke decided not to stick around any longer. He vanished in a burst of leaves and went as far away as he could. He had traps to arm. The march was slow. Slow enough for him to grab everything he could and begin to lay out the traps on the rooftops, basics that he could use to hopefully stop the insane blonde before he reached the heart of the Uchiha district where he resided. 
It had been a great plan in terms of having an entire clan surrounding the head but it now became something else. The streets were designed with the idea in mind, funnel enemy forces stupid enough to take them to large blocky buildings before an ambush force could strike. A hammer and anvil strategy almost. One building gave him oversight of the entire district and with it where he had planted numerous kunai and shuriken launchers, explosive tags, basic, and hastily assembled, wire traps, and anything else he could find in the past few hours. Naruto's forces had stopped briefly to separate into four different groups, each roughly a hundred strong, with either one of the three clones he called a centurion or Naruto himself leading them. The four had conversed briefly with each other for an hour or so, maps laid out on a table several clones had grabbed as more rested around them. Their shields were implanted in the ground and another rested on top, a locking mechanism of some sort making a wall of shields. More clones had been busy, moving around what had to be a base camp of some kind and making use of idle time with drills or spars against one another. Such a thing had helped Sasuke come to understand their combat style from where he used a telescope to spy on them. It involved heavy blows from the shield followed by a swing of the short sword before returning to the safety of the shield. It was brutal and could easily fall to fist when pushed or simple stomps to a downed opponent. At least individually that was the combat style. When together in groups of even two they moved together, shields held forward and swords held down but at the ready. He had seen them use spears, use arrows, and more from within different shield formations they assumed with little instruction beyond a shouted word. What the hell has gotten into him? He had caught glimpses of Naruto thanks to small gaps in the shield wall and he was surprised at what he saw. The dead last and his clones were poring over a map of the Uchiha district and more than once he saw them mark something but couldn't make out what. He also couldn't see much of their mouths to read their lips. He couldn't even if he wanted to, the blonde's intense expression and sheer focus would have kept him from doing much as he tried to puzzle over how the irritating prankster that was universally seen as an idiot could be so in command. They had split up eventually. 200 or so moving back to spread out and encircle the Uchiha district, from what he could spot with his telescope, and another hundred remained at the base camp. Naruto seemed to want to personally march the last hundred into the heart of the Uchiha district. Now the last Uchiha in Kanoha waited for the inevitable assault with multiple boards covered in wire strings around him. They all tied back to his hastily put together traps to try and stop the army Naruto had created to attack the former home of his deceased clan. At the thought of Naruto Uzumaki of all people conquering the Uchiha district and making it into whatever he wanted, Sasuke felt his blood boil. The dead last wouldn't beat him. Halt. Who? The clones behind him immediately stopped bringing their feet back as they stood behind their shields with swords at the ready. Several blue eyes cast a wary gaze over the numerous buildings around them. More than a few seemed almost nervous as they briefly shifted before a swift elbow or such from another clone stopped such actions. Naruto didn't move from where he stood in front of the army for several moments, focusing on something else it seemed, before he returned his sword to his side and waved his arm with two fingers raised on his hand. Immediately the first row of clones, ten in total, sprung out of the formation and the ranks immediately closed around the empty space. All of you go and scout ahead. Naruto's words were met with ten nods as the clones formed a row behind him. Report back. They were dismissed and raced down a nearby alley, splitting up into groups of two as they moved further and further down. Five pressed themselves against either side of two buildings when they reached the end and cautiously the front two peeked out, the other four holding swords at the ready behind them. Sasuke didn't see the need to attack scouts directly. His traps would be enough to take both them out the main army when they began to march again. They triggered a wire trap the moment they stepped out the alley. They were torn to shreds in plumes of smoke. Naruto's reaction was immediate. Ready artillery. Who? His order was followed as all swords were sheathed and his now less than a hundred clones held out their hands, a spear appearing in each of them. Naruto was with them as he seamlessly stepped back into the formation, his sword already at his side and spear now in hand. Fire. They drew back and fired, spears pouring out in every direction. Sasuke knew how things would turn out at the end of that light the moment he saw the explosive tags trailing each spear. He could only speak three words. Three words that perfectly summed up his situation. Fuck this bullshit. 
End flashback to the day the Orange Legion conquered the Uchiha district for no damn reason. For now. Uchiha. Naruto's voice came from the forest then and Sasuke immediately shot upright, two kunai gripped in his hands and held at the ready despite Sakura never seeing him draw them. It was useless in the end as Naruto's clone army emerged all around them, letting out shouts as they banged their swords on their shields. It was almost deafening and made Sakura cover her ears to block out the sound of metal on metal. There's no use running. Naruto's clone, the leader of the others it seemed, emerged last completely at ease. His sword was sheathed at his side and his shield was hardly raised for a fight. Moments later the shield itself was embedded into the ground and his helmet was taken off so they both could see the identical face Naruto had directed at them. Preter's glorious orange legion has you surrounded. What do you want then? Sasuke didn't lower his kunai but it seemed like he understood what would happen if he attacked. It would be a one-sided slaughter. Preter Naruto wishes to have your assistance in this test. The centurion looked to Sakura next and his eyes softened as he bowed his head to her, fist placed on his armor over his heart. I have also been given orders to escort Sakura-chan to safety with all of my might. His eyes returned to Sasuke and they returned to their past state. You presence is demanded but your condition has been left up to your level of resistance. Sasuke-kun? He wavered for a moment, the idea of resistance popping up but it seemed to deflate just as quickly. The kunai were returned to their place on his person and he gave a grudging nod. He knew he had no chance of winning against the force present. I'm glad you came to this decision. The centurion nodded to him before turning to the forest behind him. Drop Pylum. Present yourselves to Sakurachan. Who? Immediately, a dozen or so clones came marching out of the woods with smoke trailing into the air behind them. They each dropped to a knee in front of a growing confused Sakura and Sasuke took note of the differences each held from the other clones in their armor. It was the same basic design but at the same time more elaborate, a pink motif of numerous Sakura petals falling to the ground flowed up the tunics they wore underneath and the helmet of each held the same design. A Sakura tree was in bloom and was in a hollow red lined circle, a dozen red swirls dotting the outside of it in equal intervals. The same could be said for the emblem on the shields and their sword blades carried the same pink design as their tunics on the sheath and hilts. The design seemed to even stretch forward onto the blade but Sasuke was unsure if his guess was correct. Allow me to introduce you to your personal escort Sakura-chan. The clone returned his helmet to his head as he spoke and walked over to the dozen. Preter Naruto has gifted you a dozen Praetorians to use to your liking in this test. The dozen clones rose to their feet as the centurion marched across their line. They are yours to command with any order and will follow until death either on the battlefield or off it. Your life and will is all that matters to them. Preter Naruto has given them the unique title of Blossom Guards. The centurion stepped to stand next to the shocked potential genin and the Blossom Guards each stepped forward. They await your orders. Why? Sakura asked the only question that came to her mind as she saw the devotion in each pair of blue eyes locked onto her and only her. Preter Naruto wishes that you are always protected. This is only a small part of the force you shall have command of. His Praetorians are at your service of course and more join the Blossom Guard every day. The Centurion suddenly turned to Sasuke and as one the clones with him began to move from their encirclement into rows behind their leader. Achiha! Sasuke found himself going ramrod straight, his Sharingan meeting the unmoving pools of blue of the Centurion. Preter Naruto does not wish for you to march with us without proper armor. Neither am I allowed to leave without your presence among my troops. Two clones came forward with a large chest carried between the two. I have been asked by Preter Naruto to ask of you a simple question. The chest was placed on the ground by the two clones and their hands unlatched either side of it. Are you prepared to join the Uzumaki Empire? The centurion addressed him as the chest was opened and the unique armor inside was revealed. Sasuke took a moment to stop and merely admire the armor in front of him. It wasn't black and orange like the rest of the armor the clones of Naruto's Orange Legion wore or like Sakura's recently presented Blossom Guard. It was different in the coloring but identical to another set. Why does it look like this? It looked nearly identical to Naruto's own. Your actions on the battlefields of the past have shown you to be a worthy combatant and our observations have revealed you to have the qualities of a trusted ally as well. 
Respect entered the eyes of the centurion standing before them as he looked into Sasuke's Sharingan. Preter Naruto has informed all of his centurions you are to be presented with armor suiting your rank as legate of the mighty and glorious Orange Legion. Legate? Sakura almost seemed to taste the words as she spoke them, her question clear. Already her blossom guards had moved into place behind her, forming twin rows of six that loaned themselves well to the execution of many formations. They had practiced day in and day out for this moment and would not fail. Legate is the title of the second in command of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire. The centurion looked Sasuke in his eyes, his blue eyes clear in the message they held. It is the highest rank one may hold in the Orange Legion, higher than any centurion and below only Preter Naruto in authority. Steel filled his eyes, blue blades piercing red and black. It is the highest honor any may receive in the Orange Legion as it shows the complete trust of Preter Naruto in not only the capability of the one chosen but their loyalty as well. Why is he giving it to me then? Sasuke asked the question Sakura wanted to know as well as confusion crossed both their faces in equal amount as the centurion looked to the chest once before responding. Preter Naruto has shown himself to be an excellent judge of character and we of the Orange Legion will trust his judgment in you. The centurion gestured to the armor and immediately the two soldiers began to take it out and approach the Uchiha. My century is ready to march and only await your command. Then, Sasuke seemed to weigh his decision once again before he noticed something on the armor. I accept. Then it's time to suit up. Pylum. A voice called out over the battlefield and, launched from the assembled clones, a number of spears soared forward. Substitute. Shields were planted into the ground just as quickly as swords were drawn and close to 50 clones joined the remaining airborne pylum. The remaining clones in the formation closed ranks and drew the substituted pylum from the ground and raised them into the air. Pylum. All pylums were once again directed towards the silver-haired shinobi wielding two kunai in front of them. Rage burned in his eyes as the next wave arrived, screaming the war cry of the Orange Legion as they descended from the air with the thrown projectiles. Kakashi didn't care for how many attacked him, he only cared to cause them the same suffering they caused him after they had taken one of the only thing he loved from the world. Is this it? Kakashi clashed with four of the clones at once, his twin kunai infused with chakra and cutting through their swords with ease. More charged him but met the same fate as his kunai were too sharp with their enhanced cutting edge for their blades to match. They all retreated before he could finish them off as a centurion observed the battle for a moment before donning his helmet and turning to the clones watching the feudal tactic they had unleashed to delay Kakashi. You ruin my precious Aika Aika and this is all you can bring out. Try and get my blood pumping you little bastards. Draw swords. Form ranks. Who? Like always, his orders were followed as shields embedded into the ground were drawn up along their arms and short swords were drawn from where they rested at their sides. The clones of the Orange Legion held no fear in this battle despite the odds so against them, the elements themselves risen up in opposition. It was nothing to the power of the Orange Legion to face this challenge no matter how revered Silver Fong was in the world. He was still a simple man and they held only the desire to see the Silver Fong bleed like all mortals must. More joined them as a centurion approached with reinforcements from the main camp, archers, and the like assuming support positions behind the wall of shields of the main fighters. So you want glory after all then brother? The two centurions briefly met, fist clenched over the heart covered by their armor. A grin was offered beneath the helmet of the centurion about to face the silver fong in battle. Is it not what we all wish for brother? The centurion's blue eyes were not clouded with fear or anticipation as a solemn light shined from them. We must all do our duty in the end and this is mine. If I attain glory then it will be all the better. Call for me and we will fire on the Fong. Both knew the duty of the other and departed, one returned to the reinforcements and began barking orders while the other rolled his shoulders as he approached his fellow clones. All were ready to do battle until the end. The centurion easily stepped into the open ranks before they closed tight and banged on his shield with his sword before pointing forward. On me. Forward. Who? His orange cape was easy to follow as he led the latest charge against the silver fong they would fight until their last breath as the next wave of troops arrived and began to continue the encirclement. It was made somewhat difficult with the hounds he had shaped from the elements but it was still possible. 
The Orange Legion had suffered through worse and would triumph yet again against the might of the very elements themselves, they would become legends. The circle would hold and soon the Silver Fong would be defeated. It was the truth because it had to be true. Their many sacrifices had to matter by the end of this day. Shields. Another gout of flames crashed against the steel of the Orange Legion as the Hound of Flames made an attempt to breach their shields with breath that gave birth to Hellfire and failed. Its fireballs were worthless against the discipline of the Orange Legion and the Centurion who held the line with them. Archers. Who? The shields resting above them moved aside as bows were raised and arrows fitted to the string before a concentrated rain fired upon the Hound of Flames, forcing it to retreat yet again lest it face their bite. Again the shields reformed into a solid barrier between the clones and their foe and those at the front were embedded into the ground. Pylum. Who? Another wave of pylum soared through the air and came down towards Kakashi but it was stopped by a dome of stone that the spears could not pierce despite the numbers they were released in. It was only a distraction in the end regardless, more pylums were stabbed into the ground as the clones stepped aside and opened their ranks and quickly the pylum were substituted with. The ranks were closed and the once abandoned shields were returned to those they belonged to as the explosive tags wrapped around the shaft of each pylum burned. Brace. Who? The words of the centurion were followed as the shields were simultaneously embedded in the ground and the clones each crouched behind it, sword sheathed at their side and hand over ears. It was done only moments before the blast struck and the silver fong was concealed from sight. What's your status centurion? Naruto was off the battlefield for now, retreated into the forest under an escort of his Praetorians despite his displeasure at such a tactic. The centurion he had left in charge, one of the three who had stormed the Uchiha district with him, was projected as an image across the table from him. The silver fong is powerful. The centurion didn't seem worried despite the nature of the battlefield Naruto could so easily see with his eyes from his tent. Smoke, mist, dirt, and lightning erupted into the air and gales blew through the trees. Many had already been stripped bare of leaves and he had given orders to turn them into firewood later. His hounds continue to hamper our encirclement strategy but the longer we consistently engage him we have found that their power wanes. Soon he will not be able to summon them to him once they are weakened enough for capture. I intend to present them to you upon my return to Camp Preter. The promise of a trophy from the battle made Naruto's face change from grim to a grin. I look forward to it then Centurion. The two mirrored each other as they placed their fists over their hearts. The image fizzled before fading and Naruto was left alone with only the Praetorians bordering his tent and a Centurion as his company to see his sorrow. The Silver Fong has taken much from us this day and the sun has hardly risen. Naruto sighed as he stared down at the map before him, watching as large pieces of his army were annihilated by either the Silver Fong or the vicious dogs he created from the elements themselves. He himself had been wounded in the initial strike but the burns along both his arms were already mostly healed. How much longer do we have until reinforcements from our third cohort arrive from the Uchiha district? Hours from now. A Praetorian spoke up from near the entrance of the tent. The Centurions have each been delayed in their marching by several skirmishes across the fields they marched. The third cohort will not be arriving anytime soon. I see. Naruto was silent as he took in the information. The first, second, and fourth were all that remained reachable now and the last two only remotely. Only the first was present in the battle and at half strength thanks to his side project, the second was elsewhere on a campaign in hostile lands, and the fourth continued the expedition he had sent it on merely days ago and they would have marched too long for him to call any of the large force back in time to matter in this battle. The others remained in training to his most recent knowledge. I wish things had not gone so poorly when we have so few of the Orange Legion available to battle. What of the sixth? The training is progressing adequately still? The fifth has hastened the training of the sixth and both cohorts are dealing with the training of the eighth now. The seventh has been deemed ready to emerge and begin to serve the Orange Legion and await further command from you yourself, Preter Naruto. That could work. He would sadly be absent from the battle for longer than he would wish but he could bring with him the forces that turned the tide in their favor if he could then reinforce the remains of the third. He could either bring both forces with him upon his return to the battlefield or simply open up more battlefields than they were capable of handling at the moment. What of our ninth cohort? What is their status? 
It was almost his last hope now. The ninth, no matter how few, could reinforce the worst of the weak spots he could see now and were experienced enough to keep not only Silver Fong from catching on to his plan but he could send the seventh to bring the remnants of the third to him. The ninth remains in a state of no contact. The tenth has been pulled from their duty by many measures to continue searching for them but the odds are not in our favor now. The Praetorian's words made Naruto want to collapse into a chair but he tossed aside such a pointless thought. Moping would get him nowhere. Dock our perimeter then. He hated he had to resort to this but he had no choice it seemed now. Send all we can spare to reinforce our most heavy losses for now but coordinate our efforts from here. Praetor Naruto? Shock traveled through the voices of his Praetorian at such an order. Surely you don't mean to do such a thing. I do. Naruto would not argue with them and he couldn't even if he wanted to. Bring up the centurion I sent to retrieve my second in command. An image of the centurion he had sent into the forest stood in front of him within moments, saluting him with a fist over his heart before speaking. I am reporting as ordered Praetor Naruto. Legate is among us as well as Sakura-chan. We are marching with all haste to the main camp. The centurion paused before he turned to the side for a moment before returning his full attention to the commander of the Orange Legion. The legate wishes to speak with you. Allow him. Naruto looked on intently at the map laid before him, his army's movements marked on it and he spotted the force still moving through the forest. The march back would of course be slow with the supplies he needed for the main camp from that sector. The sudden boom of thunder echoing across the sky made him briefly curl his hands into fist before he turned to the soul centurion in the tent with him. Take your century and two others I'll call for. Reinforce those who hold back the storm. They've just lost more than half their forces to it and the silver fong will begin to hammer the men there once he flees the battle again. It will be done. His fist was held over his heart as he rose before the centurion drew his helmet up and hurried to assemble his troops. Reserves were in position already but they wouldn't hold for long if three centuries were being sent to reinforce them. Preter. Sasuke's voice came with his image, Naruto focusing in on the Uchiha for a moment before a wide grin broke over his face. You're wearing the armor. I am. Then you are ready to engage the Silver Fong? It seems you have a personal century already readied for me Preter. It would be a shame to waste them. Good. My centurion can handle bringing his men back. Depart from them and return to base camp when I send the beacon into the air. I'll be there soon. I'll have my forces in shape faster and see how quick I bring him down. He paused for a moment before speaking again. There's one question I have to ask before I head there, mind answering it? Ask and you will be answered Legget. What about Sakura? Her blossom guards will be responsible for protecting her. Fine then. Throw the beacon whenever you want. The image fizzled and died and Naruto turned to the nearest Praetorian, the same who had informed him of the status of the cohorts of his Orange Legion. Fire when you reach the center of camp. The order was simple and soon his victory would hinge on its success. The Praetorian left without a word and one stepped in from the ring outside to provide full protection to the Praetor inside the tent. He turned to the other side, meeting the blue eyes of two of his Praetorians. Get my armor ready. They left just as silently and once again two others stepped into the tent. In a minute he smelled the burning of the beacon and a moment later he didn't just as a clamor ran through the camp. Leg it among us. Present yourselves. He let a smile cross his face despite the harshness of the centurion responsible for his praetorians. At times he could be a bit much. No other clone had devoted themselves so intently to the rules of the Orange Legion than he had and it showed. Who? He could tell the scene outside already from the clanging of steel on steel. His Orange Legion had risen as one and acknowledged Sasuke as not only one of them but the legate. It was from his centurions all the way down. Sasuke entered the tent in full armor and paused. He slowly raised his hand to his chest in a fist and came down on where his heart rested below the armor he had been gifted by the blonde at the table. Naruto did the same after a moment and a grin split his face. How does it feel to lead an army Sasuke? I feel like it'll make things too easy for me now. Despite how strange it was, the two had somehow become like lifelong friends. It was almost as if they had met before and now they had remembered each other. For all he had his clones for, 
For all his friends, his allies, Naruto Uzumaki only trusted Sasuke Achiha to be his absolute second in command. It was a trust that he knew was so easily reciprocated despite how their relationship had been since the day they met. A grudging respect had been born since their first encounter and now it had changed into something else. Something more and deeper than either of them could ever fully understand. They just knew to trust the other despite appearances. Maybe it was the power of spite? If anyone was going to be responsible for bringing down one of them it would be the other. No one else deserved it. Maybe it was the power of tragedy? One had grown up alone and unwanted and in turn grew desperate for attention while the other had suffered through the inverse. He had grown up surrounded by family until it had been ripped away and had been near obsessive in his desire to be left alone. They understood each other in ways others simply couldn't. Or maybe it was nothing but a gut feeling. Maybe both knew that the other had their back no matter the obstacle before them. It could be all three or none of them all. No matter what the reason for their relationship being as it was, it didn't change the indisputable facts. Sasuke Achiha was legate of the Orange Legion and Naruto Uzumaki was its praetor. That wouldn't be changing for as long as either could help it. How does it feel to wear a uniform for once? The armor was something special. Naruto had it commissioned not long after the first cohort had been created, with the intention the same the entire time. He wanted Sasuke Achiha to be his legate and it showed. It was like his except the plates were a combination of various shades of blues. Beneath it the Uchiha wore a red tunic with a familiar red and white fan emblem at the end of not only each strap that reached down to cover his legs but across the armor. His blue cape was held in place by similar clasps to his own, once again the Uchiha Uchua replacing the Uzumaki swirl. His helmet held a white plume where his held a crimson one. On Naruto's insistence, even the shield and sword had been customized. The shield bore the customary swirl but also the black and white Uchua was placed within it and the sword was the same at the hilt, the same image of the Uzumaki swirl holding the Uchiha Uchua within it. How does it feel to have an Uchiha in your army? Just go get your century ready. Naruto turned back to the table and Sasuke turned to leave before he paused. Naruto. What? His legate offered him a grin. Kakashi's a goner. I know. Both carried identical grins as one left the tent and another awaited his armor to be delivered to him. It had been heavily damaged during his injury and a new set had to be retrieved from somewhere in the camp. It had taken time that he didn't like wasting just as the centurion in charge of his praetorians entered the tent. Praetor Naruto. His fist was raised to his chest over his heart and Naruto returned the gesture from his clone. Centurion. Both let their hand fall back to their side as two Praetorians stepped into the tent with Naruto's armor held on a stand carried between them. It was a pristine set and already Naruto found he didn't like the aura it held. The richly crafted set looked like it belonged in a museum or on a display. Armor should be notched, dented, and more from when a warrior had taken to the battlefield in it. My armor. He could still be in some awe of the sheer quality of it through. Such a thing would never change. It was wonderfully crafted and Naruto knew how sturdy it truly was despite the pristine and near-fragile look of it. He knew he would be dead if it didn't offer such great protection from Silver Fong's attack. Centurion present. Who? Sasuke's arrival was marked with a shout and the sound of a hundred swords meeting a hundred shields. He looked across his small force when compared to the sheer might Naruto already commanded of the Orange Legion, and couldn't help but allow a smile to cross his face. The centurion who had escorted him through the forest until he had seen the beacon had informed him of the various tactics they had been drilled in the use of, and he fully intended to make good of such practice. Kakashi wouldn't know what hit him once the Uchiha arrived. How, how did you manage to do all this? The training ground was, when described with a single world, obliterated. Craters marked its surface, fires still burned, parts of the forest were either burned, burning, or flooded, Fissures dotted the surface of the ground, and the three posts in front of them stood in pristine condition. The Hokage took in the entirety of what was before him as the jonin responsible for most of the mess merely shrugged his shoulders from where he sat crouched on top of one of the three undamaged posts. The elderly leader dimly noted that two empty bento boxes rested at the base of the post. You know how Jenin can get Hokage-sama. Kakashi once again shrugged his shoulders. He was acting as if what he was seeing was acceptable. They motivated me to show them a few things. 
I eventually decided to show them the results of hard work and control to motivate them a bit too much I guess. Once again, he shrugged his shoulders. They passed the test through. It was obvious from where light shined from the large tent erected not too far away from the shinobi present. It was massive and shouts and laughter reached them all from it and the myriad of other smaller tents and smaller lights around it. It was impressive to see such a sight until Hiruzen's eyes settled on the decimation before him and he once again felt as if the world was gone. There would be so much paperwork for the mess that took place here today to keep him busy all week. Perhaps even two weeks. That doesn't excuse what's happened here Kakashi. Asuma for once wasn't smoking from where he stood next to his father. An entire contingent of ANBU and other jonin seemed to be behind the two of them as well. None of them looked very excited to be present or seemed to have good intentions when it came to the occupants of the tents. Those inside were the cause for the ruination of a tradition that had stood since the founding of the academy and assignment of rookie genin teams to the elite jonin of Kanahagakur. To be fair, it was a phenomenal showing of teamwork from everyone involved with the events of today. Kakashi had a very well-developed danger sense, one born from years on the battlefield and even more in the Black Ops branch of the village in the ANBU. He had gone on missions vital to the village, faced countless challenges, overcome foe after foe deemed a threat, and had returned every time able to continue it for year after year. He understood danger in all its forms from the obvious to the hidden, from the perilous to the mortal, and what was avoidable and what had to be faced. Right now he understood he was in an unavoidable situation where the danger was an obvious thing but not anything greater than perilous. The danger was obvious after judging the killing intent engulfing him, an attempt to terrify him to no avail as he yawned instead. It was a perilous one, few things could be mortal to the shinobi who had copied a thousand techniques. It was also something that had to be faced if he didn't want to become trash. The three genin at the heart of it, more like one in truth, were now officially his comrades and he didn't abandon comrades. Those kids you were testing, at least one of them, caused more than a few problems for the rest of the village while you were going on your rampage. Asuma looked at Kakashi with eyes not only befitting the former member of the Twelve Guardian Ninja but also the survivor of the brutal battle between the Twelve that wiped out all but two. He's gotta to pay for everything he ruined and don't think you can stop us Kakashi. You're good, one of the best shinobi in Kanoha, but we're all pretty pissed off right now. Over the genin tests getting interrupted? Kakashi literally hand waved away the source of their anger and pointedly ignored the increase in killing intent directed at him. You guys can't still be upset over something that happened more than an hour ago. If you are, you're just living in the past by this point. Kakashi's single eye roamed over the jonin and ANBU gathered in front of him before settling on Asuma once more. Besides, didn't you deal with it with your teams? I heard that most of them passed this year because of that. Let's not even start talking about the experience most of the kids got from fighting a bunch of shadow clones. That's not the point Kakashi. Hiruzen took his pipe from his lips and held out at his side. He came close to letting himself laugh at the acting skills of one of his most elite jonin. We both know exactly why we've all gathered here and, despite how much I wished it wasn't the case, Naruto Kuen is the source of more discontent than usual. Hiruzen returned his pipe to his lips. You have to know that I can't exactly let either you or Team 7 escape any punishments after what happened during all of Kanoha's genin tests. All of them may have resulted in promoting the graduated academy students to the rank of full genin but the spirit of the exams, the legacy the founder of Kanahagakur left us to carry on year after year, was tarnished. The aged Hokage looked at Kakashi with eyes that had driven men and women to flee from the brutal battlefields he stepped foot on time and time again and found that it had no effect on the jonin. Those that are responsible for it must be held responsible and must be taught a lesson. I'm not so sure that should happen. What you want is irrelevant Hataki. Ah, but it does Hokage-sama. Kakashi remained on the pole but his form shifted. He was preparing himself to fight the Jonin and ANBU gathered in front of him. The legacy of the Jenin tests you're all upset about may have been tarnished by the actions of a couple of Jenin, but the main idea, the spirit, of it remains where it always has. The idea of the team is greater than any individual remains strong no matter what happened today. Teamwork helped fix the mess my Jenin caused because where an individual would fall the team stood tall. Realistically, 
Not even the Jonan and ANBU you've got with you could have stopped all of those clones before they had attacked if that was their actual intentions. Their numbers were a bit too big, their tactics a bit too good, and the mind behind them a bit too devious. Those Jenin, the same ones you're blaming me for passing the tests you set, showed just how well the will of fire has been passed down from one generation to the next. They could have run, they could have hid from battle, but they didn't because they had comrades they cared for. They had people to protect that made them stand and fight not alone but together as one. Jenin came together and helped save the village from a threat just like Jonin came together stopped the very real threat of the QB 12 years ago. We didn't have any casualties this time but the core principle is still the same. They didn't fight for themselves out there, they fought for their friends and family, they fought for Konoha, they fought for the next generation to be able to do the same. Kakashi 1 visible eye lazily looked into one of the Hokage's own. Isn't that a pretty good lesson? Your ability to spin anything to your favor still hasn't left you Kakashi. Asuma now desperately wished he had a cigarette judging from the way his hands rested on the pocket he kept a pack in. You may be right but that doesn't change what happens or what's going to happen to the kid responsible for this mess in the first place. So I take it we all can't let things go? Kakashi closed his own visible eye, wariness not coloring his voice or leaking into his body language. He was completely at ease despite the power of the force in front of him and the now assured path this confrontation would take. When his eye opened it held the emotionless greys that most ANBU eventually possessed during their tenure in the shadows. I really think we should all reconsider what's about to happen and decide it's not worth the trouble it'll bring to anyone here. It was gone once he blinked. Let's all just decide this day has been long enough already and let it go. No one's really hurt and there's no real reason to fight over it. My eternal rival is correct. One shinobi had decided to deviate from the pack almost immediately upon their arrival to the ruined training ground and now stood with the legendary shinobi. Mado Guy had a grin on his face and his teeth shining as he spoke in his normal exuberant manner. This day has been both long and a joyous one despite what we all may think of it now. The will of fire truly burns bright and strong in all our new shinobi. Be them big or small, they worked past their differences to face an unknown threat not alone but as a single unit. Suddenly his smile was gone and he was solemn. Before we could only hope for such unity during times at war when comrades battled with one another on the battlefields we sent them to without pause. It was such a time where children marched into death and bloodshed without an end in sight and still refused to work together, refused to believe in the strength of the will of fire and paid the ultimate price for such a thing. The solemn air was gone as he smiled again and jerked his thumb towards the large tent in the distance. But now Naruto Uzumaki has presented us a new chance to show our unity and the renewed strength of the will of fire we all take pride in. It is no longer an ember or a small flame but now a great blaze that reaches into the very heart of our forces and fills our minds and bodies with its message and strength. Such a thing should be seen as a worth the trade for several destroyed training grounds. Dad, let's quit Tal Dash, Asuma would never actually get to finish what he was saying. March on your centurion. Who? The sounds of steps striking the ground in unison reached them all then. It was entirely too convenient that just now they were beginning to move. It wasn't convenient at all in the end, Naruto was clearly visible as he stepped out of the large tent with his Praetorians falling into ranks behind him. The century of his legate was next and the two marched side by side with each other. Behind them were the Blossom Guards, having swelled their numbers to a solid 50 now as they marched with Sakura at the head. Halt! Who? The army of 250 came to a stop as Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all continued with few accompanying them in an entourage. Several centurions as the units that had flanked them as quietly as possible emerged from the woods with shields and swords at the ready. Torches were lit to reveal the positions they had taken around the arguing shinobi as the genin of Team 7 stopped between the two opposing sides. Present our banners. Naruto was completely at ease, perhaps more than even Kakashi, as he looked over the gathered elite of Konoha's shinobi forces. One hand was laid on his sword but it was more for the pose than anything that threatened violence. Personalized shields fitted on shafts made of fallen trees were lifted into the air and staked into the ground. Only three of his banners were represented at the moment. The swirl of the orange legion, the Uchiwa and swirl of the century of his legate, and the pink blooming tree that was the symbol of the blossom guards. 
All three standards were presented but behind them towered the large banner that he had been busy with for several hours. The symbol of the bloodied first cohort, a pack of hounds, seemingly birthed by the world itself from the elements that composed them, howling into the air and with them stood the clones of the first cohort holding their shields and swords at the ready without fear. Terror would flee before the hearts of those of the first cohort and they would chase it down to slay it like they did the hounds of nature. I must admit, I never thought to make the acquaintance of so many revered guests so soon. Naruto stepped forward, a grin on his face as he looked at the gathered Jonin and ANBU behind the Hokage. He was at ease despite the killing intent flooding the world around him from the infuriated Jonin that he had made enemies of. But proper introductions are a must and so I present to you all the glory of a small part of the mighty Orange Legion I command to the last man. The clones moved, presenting their arms with a shout as Naruto gestured behind him. Behold the core military of the great Uzumaki Empire headed by myself and one other. That seemed to be Sasuke's cue to step forward, a hand clasped over his head in a fist while his helmet rested under his free arm. I am the legate of the Orange Legion. His words were short and direct. I am second in command of the Orange Legion of the Great Uzumaki Empire. There was nothing left to say for him it seemed, the Uchiha stepping back into line without further words. The lovely Sakura-chan stands before you as well. Naruto smiled towards the Pinkette, dressed in red armor that seemed more stylized than either of the sets the other two wore. It was most likely because the other two were damaged from battle despite being freshly polished. Hers carried a similar style with her red and white battle dress on underneath. It was the greatest difference between the three sets of armor as hers was modeled with the dress she wore in mind. Additional plates of steel and ribbons of leather had seemingly been added at her shoulders, down her arms, and hung down her waist like all the others. Cut the nonsense Uzumaki. Asuma kept his hands in his pocket next to his father. Don't bother with wasting our time. You know why we're here and you know what we're going to do. My scouts did inform me of your intention some time ago. Naruto stepped forward yet again, standing two paces ahead of his legate and the lovely Sakura-chan and his blue eyes hardened into the coldest ice any of them had ever seen. A shiver ran down the spines of more recent Jonin and even an experienced one felt the hairs on the back of their neck rise up. The air around them had simply become danger. Danger in a way they had experienced only briefly but would forever remember. It was a danger that was 12 years in the past but no less recent for those that had felt it in the air that night. It didn't matter if they did so or not as I would know from the deaths you and your allies behind you have wrought on my glorious Orange Legion. Your attack on my third cohort created many complications for the Orange Legion. Our armor, our weapons, our supplies, our men, you made a mistake of delaying them all from assisting the first in the battle against the Silver Fong and his hounds. You prevented me from obtaining the greatest glory of my glorious Uzumaki Empire to date because you allowed a reckless fear to guide you. Your actions could have even led to defeat of my great Orange Legion if not for the actions of my legate against Silver Fong. Rage did not flow through his words, it was threaded like a needle through every letter. It stitched his words into sentences and the more he spoke the sharper the sticks became but never did they become sloppy, never did they become a rushed thing. It was precise above all else and all knew why. Fury was a thing better controlled, better used with a purpose in mind and the purpose of the Uzumaki before them was as clear as the cloudless sky. You could have cost my men the battle because of actions born of paranoia and fear. You could have created such a disgrace that the Uzumaki Empire would never stand at the heights it should unless I obliterated the entire village for the crimes against my legion. You could have tarnished the Orange Legion before I even truly began my great campaigns and made me do things I would look back on in the future and still not regret. I would unleash the full might of my legion upon the village that had caused such destruction to it and would show no mercy. Your lands would not be conquered in the name of the Uzumaki Empire as they would not be worthy. Such actions like the ones you have taken would have earned nothing less than a denial of ever having existed as my Orange Legion destroyed the past, present, and future of these lands without regret. The shield holding the mark of the first seemed to begin to shine with an unholy light. Fury seemed to imbue itself in the object as Naruto's frozen gaze moved across the Jonin as for many they felt fear from the most unlikely of sources. A simple Jenin was able to drive the cold blade of fear deep into their hearts without issue it seemed. The actions I would take against you are tame when compared to others. 
The crimes against my legion you committed are not a thing I can ever allow to go unaddressed as it is now. The air became thick. It could almost be choked on as the fury of Naruto Uzumaki was felt by all. His rage was the air for a moment, filled their lungs with the hate he held, made many consider running from the genin before them. His will replaced all other facts, his will to destroy, to conquer, to obliterate his foes. It was felt by all those in attendance and it was a stifling thing. But I am not without mercy. The coldness was gone, his smile returned as a table was set up in front of him by several of his Praetorians. Join me here at this table and together let us speak of the ills visited upon each other and let us remedy them with all haste. We do not need to be enemies more than we need to be the strongest of allies. Naruto's smile was bright and wide as his blue eyes seemed to shine as if the sun itself had taken residence in the deep blue pools. The tragedies of this day shall turn into the strongest of foundations for our bond of brotherhood the same as in the long ago past with the Uzumaki clan. I see no reason for the Uzumaki empire not to the same. I figured you would do something like this Naruto Kuen. Hiruzen, despite the disaster the day had nearly become, couldn't help but chuckle as he walked forward and to the table. It wasn't as simple a thing as it looked to the untrained eye. Seals dotted the surface of it, basic ones but they came together to do several things. First, it was easy to carry. Second, it possessed tremendous durability. Third, the professor had no idea what the last seal did. He only knew that he had never seen it but once long ago in his long life and was too young to remember what precisely it was used for. You seem to be a natural at Fuinjutsu Naruto Kuen. As my dream is to create the grandest of empires in the Uzumaki Empire, I must hold myself to certain standards Sarutobijiji. The aged Hokage rose an eyebrow at the change of address but from the grin on Naruto's face he knew he would receive no answer as both sat down. Kakashi had approached the table at a more sedate pace and slipped into the chair left for him. Behind Naruto, his legate stepped forward and stood there with his Praetorians fanning out to present themselves on what was quickly identified as Naruto's side of the table. Sasuke's century didn't move from its location but its formation changed as the Blossom Guards were absorbed into its center. The Uzumaki wasn't the only one who stood at the table with guards through, a group of four ANBU stood behind the Hokage as his shadow and Asuma stood at his shoulder. Guy seemed to have also joined Kakashi on his side of the table, grinning at his fellow Jonin for a moment before the talks would begin. We come together not as foes now my friends but as those wishing to see all ills remedied and the destruction born from conflict avoided. Naruto looked at both the Hokage and the legendary shinobi that stood across from him. We must not allow ourselves to fall into the trappings of vengeance. It will only lead to blindness from our true enemies. His blue eyed held something not many present had ever seen from Naruto Uzumaki. A type of intelligence that was frightening. Believe me when I say that, despite the events of today, we are not foes and instead have the same enemies. The Uzumaki Empire does not stand against Konoha but forever with my homeland. It would be foolish to do battle with a place so precious to the heart of not only myself but to the hearts of all those in the Orange Legion. True enemies? What is this kid talking about? Asuma spoke partly to himself and partly to Haruzen but the aged Hokage provided answer enough as he slowly nodded. His lit pipe allowed him to release a string of smoke into the air as he considered the new information before him before deeming it time to speak again. Your scouts were very extensive it seems Naruto Kuen. Hiruzen resisted the urge to ruffle the hair of the genin in front of him. He was sure the clones that made up his orange legion would take offense to such a thing despite the good-natured intentions of the old man. This truly does change what I originally intended to do after having so many angry Jonin charge into my office with complaints about a blonde army marching through the village. I had originally intended to simply break down this mess and punish you for causing so much chaos but this completely changes my mind. So we're finished here already? Kakashi looked to want to get this all over with quickly and he received a nod from the Hokage. I see no reason to interrupt matters anymore. He released another breath of smoke. Team 7 has officially passed its test and become genin, the village is undamaged, and the village has far more teams than usual this year thanks to an unforeseen event earlier today. Then we're done here. Kakashi turned to the genin he would be teaching soon, Sakura having wandered over for the most part to stand next to Sasuke behind the Uzumaki. 
Report here same time tomorrow and we'll start training. All three of you will pay for destroying my Aika Aika. His voice promised suffering for their past sin before he vanished in a burst of leaves and smoke. I shall depart to begin my night training. Guy flashed another smile to Naruto but something was different about it. The green beast of Konoha is eager to see your flames of youth burn brightly Naruto. He only received a smirk from the genin before he vanished in a burst of pure speed at such a level that no one saw the green blur leave the training grounds. This will be interesting to see. Hiruzen breathed out another stream of smoke with a grin on his face as he turned to the Uzumaki he knew was destined for great things. With or without the massive force he now had, Naruto would be great. Have fun tomorrow Naruto Kuen. With this I believe we must all depart to our duties. Before you go, I need to make you a promise Saruto Bijiji. Naruto's answer brought on the continued presence of the now curious Hokage and he grinned as he pointed towards the hat resting on his head. Blue eyes shine with the same old determination that they had carried for years on end. The determination was the same through every trial and tribulation their owner faced. It was something that was so familiar that it made the old man smile despite his attempt not to. Those eyes held what his successor would need and every time he saw it a fire he did not know was dim grew brighter and more intense. The future would be a place like no other thing in the past or present because of the determination in those eyes. I'm still going to take that hat off your head so keep it warm for me. I'll try to Naruto Kuen. With his peace said, Hiruzen Sarutobi vanished just like Kakashi did. A moment later the gathered Jonin did the same despite how much some wished to simply charge the genin responsible for the mess today had turned into. They withheld themselves because the Hokage had not taken action so they were not allowed to take action no matter what they wished. The fury any aggressor would face from the elderly Hokage was enough for any of them to all fall quickly into line. Well, that went well, right? Naruto grinned as he turned to look at the lovely Sakura-chan along with his legate and gathered Praetorians. His eyes shined with the delight he must be feeling at a job well done. It went perfectly, Sakura-chan. Absolutely perfectly. Well this is impressive. Kakashi's words accurately summed up the thoughts of what everyone was feeling. Naruto's Orange Legion had made themselves useful once again and it wasn't in a battle. He had selected one of his centurions from the first cohort to take several months of D-rank missions from the Hokage every few days. With the required missions now off the hands of Team 7 for the day, both he and Sasuke sparred against each other within a circle of the Legion centurions. It was a thing that had become customary in the weeks after Team 7 had officially been formed. Every day the two battled one another in mock combat to sharpen their skills and quench their thirst for battle. The steel of their weapons had been replaced with wood to avoid killing and their shields were far less elaborate, once again being simple wood in the form of the defensive instrument. The Jonin considered the training enough for the physical portion the two needed and had left them to regularly fight each other. Chakra control and basic techniques like tree walking and water walking were given of course but neither had come close to mastering it yet. On the other hand, he sent Sakura off for a number of exercises based around chakra control and stamina. His shadow clone should still be hounding her even now to keep her moving in the forest. A half dozen more kept her blossom guard from interfering in the training. You're good Achi huh? Their practice bar reached another lull, both remaining in place behind their shields as they circled each other. Your Sharingan has helped you learn the combat of the Orange Legion very quickly. Almost as quick as my centurions and I developed it. I've been called a prodigy at times. Sasuke spoke nothing else as his body darted forward. Naruto's shield was raised, blocking the heavy blow from his own shield before both swung the wooden blade in place of the steel they used in true battle. Neither broke the guard of the other as they clashed but the point of the spar wasn't anything more than endurance by this point. Both had been striking and testing the strength of the other with the wooden weapons in their hands for close to two hours now and they remained dressed in full armor. Most of Naruto's centurions had cast off their helmets at the least as they watched the two commanders battle each other in another test of strength. The last Uchiha attempted to force Naruto off balance with a lunge led by his shield after he broke away but the Uzumaki was ready for it. He had seen the move's execution seemingly from their clash of blades as he was quick to place his shield in front of him and turn himself into a brace for the wood. The two shields met with a solid thud before both combatants pulled away throwing their defense out to the side, and lunged forward with swords extended. 
Sasuke's blade struck against the side of Naruto's armor in what was a deflected blow but Naruto's was more critical. Sasuke's arm would have been severed if they were using true steel and both knew it as would struck skin with a meaty thud. For now it would be a painful bruise by the end of the day to remind him of his inattentiveness. He had been too focused on his own strike to counter Naruto's own. You're good but you are not the greatest legged. Naruto chuckled as the two broke away for now, falling into a lull in practice as was common every hour or so. It was to refresh oneself from the mindset of battle and allow one to rest. Centurions, what news do you bring to me? Naruto plunged the tip of his wooden blade into the ground and leaned his practice shield against it. No words came from any of the clones present for a moment before the leader of his Praetorians stepped forward with a scroll clutched in his hands. News from the fourth expedition has been brought to you immediately as requested Praetor. Naruto took the scroll and broke the seal with a nod, a somewhat hastily drawn swirl over the end of the paper, and his blue eyes read through the report quickly. I hope this is good news. Sasuke had taken to his role as second in command rather well, the Uchiha plunged his two weapons into the ground together and awaited an answer from the Uzumaki he had begun to follow since that day in the forest. It is. Naruto was grinning by the time he lowered the scroll and looked out towards his gathered centurions. The expedition has been a resounding success and the fourth cohort will return within the month with trophies of their discoveries and tales of glory from hard-won battles. I thought you sent the second on a campaign, why was the fourth fighting? The Uchiha was met with laughter from not only Naruto but the centurions identical to the Uzumaki around him. All of them joined in as they found the same humor from his words it seemed. He ignored the idea of striking out and instead focused on getting an answer. What made them fight on an expedition? The Orange Legion does not march if not to battle Sasuke. Naruto's words provided half an answer and the legate understood he wouldn't be able to get any more answers from the blonde anytime soon. His words did give him something to mull over in private later through. Our future glory is concealed by the mist of uncertainty but battle will always be awaiting us as our most constant companion. Glory may leave us for shame, shame may leave us for glory, the sweet taste of victory can so easily give way to the bitterness of defeat but through it all battle shall walk with us. Stride for stride the cruelty of battle will march with each and every one of the mighty Orange Legion. I suppose you're right Praetor. Sasuke shrugged his shoulders after considering his words, mulling over Naruto's short declaration before he walked over to where both had placed their weapons and drew up the two sheathed blades. For now, let us prepare to march with our friend again. The hilt of his sword was extended to him and it was something Naruto gladly took. I like the way you think Legate. He turned to his awaiting centurions then. Continue the drills. The first cohort will not be so disappointing again as it was against the Silver Fong. Who? The centurions answered with fist clenched over their chest, going ramrod straight before receiving a reply in similar from both Naruto and Sasuke. Dismissed. The legate followed after Naruto, his praetorians assembling around him as he marched towards his tent. He needed more information on the fourth and the progress of their mission. It was information he could not gain simply by reading and definitely not something to have discussed out in the open. Spies were everywhere. The Uzumaki Empire was not insurmountable as much as he would like to think the opposite. They could be infiltrated despite his best efforts to ensure strict guidelines and parameters for all soldiers in the Orange Legion to follow. Spies could still infiltrate even the group he had created. Sasuke, how well did you century really do against Kakashi? The question, once they had entered the tent and Praetorians spread out to encircle the outside of it, was asked and the sole Uchiha of the Orange Legion froze mid-step. He was silent for too long. Legate, how did you century combat Kakashi Hitaki? We suffered 37 casualties once we had finished encircling him. What was left of my century was committed in full to combating Kakashi to the best of our ability where we lost 13 more. Sakura claimed the bells as planned once we had fully restrained him in the net. His voice was emotionless as he reported his casualties to the leader of the Uzumaki Empire and its Orange Legion. I replenished my man before we confronted the Hokage and Kanoha Shinobi from reserve forces that had completed their training. The fallen 50 of my century were buried during the night we celebrated by myself and my century. I presented myself to you for the festivities after I had finished. Silence greeted him. You're a capable commander then. 
Kakashi wiped out several centuries before that and killed several centurions before we finally managed to imprison him. I figured that your entire century would have been wiped out and I would have had to personally reinforce you with the entirety of my Praetorians. Most of my centurions would have lost more men than you did and not have succeeded. Naruto walked over to the table in the center of his tent as he spoke, tapping his fingers on it and a high-pitched ringing went out from it for a moment. In short, while not exemplary, you performed well against Silver Fang. Thank you Preter. Don't mention it. Naruto laid the scroll he had been delivered on the table and opened it once again. Now a hidden blue swirl began to glow. Report. The centurion he had left in charge of the entire expedition appeared in a fizzle and burst of static. His helmet was off and tucked under his free arm as his other was in use, pressed against his chest with his fist over his heart. He bowed his head briefly before he began to speak. The expedition has been an immense success Preter Naruto. The fourth suffered few casualties from our battle with that vile beast and we've received word from the second as well. The campaign goes well and soon our two forces shall unite and begin the final push. The artifact you wished for us to gather is among the most trusted of my guard and shall be personally delivered to you by my most experienced century. I will order them to depart once our message is finished. Good. Naruto nodded to himself before he turned to Sasuke. Present yourself legate. Preter Naruto. He nodded towards the leader of the Orange Legion and turned to the Centurion. Blue eyes sharpened as they took in the appearance of the Uchiha before they minutely widened. He pressed his fist over his armored chest and the Centurion automatically returned the gesture. I am Sasuke Uchiha, legate of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire. I am Centurion Uzumaki, commander of the 4th cohort of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire. The Centurion responded automatically with his rank even if his eyes did not leave Sasuke's own for a moment longer before Blue Eyes met Blue Eyes. Preter Uzumaki, do you wish to speak with my fellow Centurion who leads the second cohort? That is part of the reason I am contacting you as I am. Naruto received a nod from the Centurion as he stepped forward, his fingers drumming on a table and a bell sounded for a moment before another image appeared at the end of the table. Preter Naruto. The centurion of the second cohort gave Naruto the customary greeting of the Uzumaki Empire with his fist over his armored chest before his eyes moved to the Uchiha who answered with the same motion. This is the legate of our legion I suppose? You would be correct. I am Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke let his hand fall to his side as he turned his gaze to Naruto, the two centurion briefly meeting the eyes of the other before doing the same. Preter Naruto, what did you send the second and fourth after? It was a joint venture for the most part. Naruto looked towards the map and it changed, a shimmering ripple moving across its entirety before the second and fourth cohorts were displayed in full on it. The second's campaign was always designed to provide a clear path for the fourth to advance as I intended. The second moved through more hostile lands than I originally thought they would face and were delayed more severely than any of us considered when we planned. If they had not moved through such brutal resistance when they did I would have gathered what was left of the third and summoned the seventh to begin a new advancement to reinforce them with all haste. Luckily it did not go that far. The second triumphed and tasted glory as we all should have known they would, just like we should have never doubted our first cohort against the Silver Fong and his hounds. The second cohort advanced and the fourth cohort, as planned, advanced behind it by several days. They eventually fully split from the path and came to where I needed them to be above all else. Yuzushiogakure. Sasuke noticed the placement of the fourth cohort and where the second was not too far away from. It was your goal the entire time. Bandits had overrun the region decades ago so you sent the second on an extermination campaign. The fourth's expedition was entirely devoted to arriving at Yuzushiogakure through what small resistance remained once the bandit clans realized a military was beginning to move on the region. You caught on rather quick legged. Naruto motioned for him to step fully up to the table as he pointed down to where the fourth cohort remained encamped. The entirety of the fourth cohort, and soon the second, now lay in place. The heartland of the Uzumaki Empire will be reborn and with it will come the call to arms of the full might of the Orange Legion. I will call out the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th to do battle with my enemies with the might of the Uzumaki Empire standing with me. 
Each cohort shall begin a campaign with their full strength at last and my empire will be so vast that not even the sun may ever be blind to its glory. I will control the land from sea to sea, from field to field, across the peaks every mountain, hold the land through all valleys, not even a single river shall not be mine as all shall know the might of the Uzumaki and rejoice and tremble at the terrible power of my empire. A grin stretched over his face as his blue eyes envisioned the future as he stared at the map. Soon all shall know the power I possess and the glory of the Uzumaki will be restored. It must be obvious but inform me of what I must do to play my part. Sasuke stood with Naruto as his eyes traveled over the map. Almost immediately the entirety of the Orange Legion was revealed, the vast encampments of the 4th and 2nd cohorts near Yuzushiogakure and the 1st and 3rd cohorts lying in wait for the inevitable conquests their leader spoke of within the village and outlying lands of Hai no Kuni. I will be giving you command of the 3rd cohort in the future. The ceremony will most likely take place within the next few months in Yuzushiogakure once the 4th and the 2nd finish repairs. In the meantime, I'll be putting you in charge of recruitment and revitalization. The third was nearly shattered thanks to the Jonin tests the Centurions marched them through and it will be your responsibility to repair that damage. I'll keep hold of the first and we'll go from there when the third is at full strength. The ninth and the tenth? When will you revitalize them? The tenth will remain in pursuit of the ninth as I have ordered them. The tone the Praetor took made it obvious to all three who heard that the topic was to be dropped. It was. I will look into the third and begin meeting with the centurions in command. The better I know them, the better I will be able to lead the cohort in its entirety. Then you are dismissed at your leisure. I will remain here for now with the leaders of the second and fourth and finish planning. Inform the first to continue drills as instructed earlier. Naruto's blue eyes did not leave the map and the near rabid eagerness his speech had brought would not abate anytime soon. It was the correct decision for Sasuke to leave his presence. As you wish Praetor. The legate left the tent with his fist once again over his heart. Do you truly trust him Praetor Naruto, trust him above all other centurions loyal to our dying breath to the Orange Legion? The centurion of the fourth cohort finally answered the question that had bothered him the entire conversation. Where has he proved his loyalty to you? He has not. Naruto chuckled to himself at the thought. I have his allegiance through. I know his drive and I know what his passion truly is. He will remain loyal because I provide the tools for him to achieve his goals when no one else could or wished to. And what is that? The fourth cohort centurion once again asked the question that bothered not only him but the centurion leading the second cohort as well. Neither had taken the news well and they knew the centurions of the other cohorts would not respond in any positive way at all. The tenth may even openly rebel with their history. There was a reason they remained in a pursuit many viewed as a pointless race towards an early demise. Tactics. Strategy. Intelligence. Naruto held a finger up for each word. I have given him access to each of these three and one other, the greatest of them all. His eyes were alit with the same rabid light from before as a fourth finger was raised. Experience. None are useful if he does not know how to truly use them and he understands that. The only way to understand tactics is to deploy strategies and both will test his intelligence in numerous ways. All three will only be sharpened into the true blade they can become through experience. Clever. He is not in the debt of the Legion but cannot accomplish his goal without them. The Centurion from the second cohort nodded along to Naruto's plan before he turned to the Centurion in command of the fourth. Speaking of intelligence, my scouts should be arriving to report to you within the next hour. I sent one of my more trustworthy centurions with them to organize a force to escort the century bearing the burden of the artifact Praetor requested of us. He will require some of your best. He will have my best then. They are ready for the slaughter we will unleash on this bandit filth. The centurion of the fourth cohort seemed eager at the thought. Perhaps I will join them myself, lead a separate force to further confuse any watching bandit trash. A raiding party can be assembled quickly and my scouts have reported several bases nearby. Do not risk the artifact. Naruto spoke his piece with authority in his voice, the blonde's eyes holding the power that commanded the Orange Legion's might to his will without question. If it is not delivered safely to Yuzushiogakure then I will appoint two new centurions for both of your cohorts. Am I understood? Your will is our will Praetor. 
Both answered together, bowing their heads as a fist was brought up to their armored heart. The Legion's name shall not be tarnished as long as we draw breath. Good. You are dismissed. Naruto tapped the table after both looked at him with stone-cold blue eyes. He smiled to himself at his plan coming along so nicely before his attention changed to the map once again. A tap to it brightened the century carrying the artifact that was so precious to the Uzumaki Empire. Soon you will be returned to your rightful place. He could almost touch it. He knew it was near lunacy but somehow he knew he could touch it simply by caressing the light that represented it. Soon you will be returned and give birth to the Uzumaki Empire. He stepped away from his map and focused his mind in the present. Eight days passed without issue. On the ninth things were changed. Team 7 is here and reporting for C-rank mission assignment Hokage-sama. Kakashi stood with his arms crossed behind his back, the three armored genin standing behind him. Sasuke and Naruto had foregone their shields but carried their swords at their sides. Sakura's armor, while still of a clear difference between the armor of the other two present, seemed more fitting of a warrior now. She had begun intense training with the members of her Blossom Guard. Good. I have a rather simple one for Team 7. The Hokage turned to one of the Chunin standing near a door. Bring in Tazuna. Introductions did not go well. Allow me the honor to execute this drunk preter. Sasuke drew his sword from his side, the blade pointed upwards towards where Tazuna's now frantically beating heart resided. He dares to insult the Legion. Don't. Naruto's blue eyes drilled into Tazuna. The drunk made an attempt to not even meet the eyes of the blonde but regardless the man felt violated at a spiritual level. His voice was calm as he spoke but a blizzard swirled beneath the blue of his eyes and it was filled with the howling winds of rage and the brutal rage of hail. He is a client of the village. He will be protected by my legion at all times. His hands did not rest at the blade at his side as his eyes bored into Tazuna's despite the height difference. Allow him to live knowing those he so callously insulted will do what he cannot. Of course Preter. Sasuke's sword returned to his side without another word even if it seemed like he did not fully agree with the leader of the Orange Legion. What's going on Kakashi-sensei? You'll know when you're older Sakura. Introductions had begun poorly but they somehow worsened by the time Team 7 would leave the building. None of them looked forward to the mission with the old drunk. Hours later, Naruto stood before the clones of the still weakened third cohort and the laboring first cohort. The first will remain here. You are not move the soldiers within it from the village unless I explicitly order for reinforcements or send word to do so. You will be under the command of the Prefectus Castro Rum of my Praetorians and I expect you to follow all of his orders as if they were mine. The clone in question, the Prefectus Castro Rum of the Praetorians, stepped forward, his helmet off and underneath his arm. He will make sure training and the like continues. The construction of our more advanced equipment will remain on schedule as well. Blue eyes locked with those of the Prefectus Castro Rum. All of our projects will remain on time as well, correct? He received a wordless nod before he continued. The second and fourth are still outside the village as I have explained to you all and the legate of our mighty legion. They will remain in Yuzushiogakure until such a time is reached that we can further reinforce them. The second will continue to campaign against the organized bandits of the land and soon they will all fall against our steel. Nods followed his words from each centurion present, glee filling their blue eyes at the thought of such vermin destroyed. Crushed beneath their heel and left to rot in the inescapable place all trash like them deserved. You all must be curious about the others of the Orange Legion but don't worry about not being informed. The Orange Legion is strong when we all know the goal and know the plan that will lead us to it. The 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th will remain as reserves in full and only be called out if the situation turns drastic. If it does so then I shall give full authorization to draw out all four cohorts. The ninth, as we all know, remains unknown in their condition, and the tenth remains where they need to be. Naruto's eyes traveled around the large building the Orange Legion Centurions had met in. The Centurions of the second and fourth cohorts watched on as hazy images off to the side, their Centurions present with them as ordered but not visible. All were subject to the blue stones that were the eyes of their leader. They knew the full burden of the Uzumaki Empire rested on his shoulders, a heavy burden he had taken on willingly because of his faith in the Orange Legion. They would not disappoint. 
the legate and I will be leading the remains of third cohort onward to Nami no Kuni with the bridge builder. His words did not bring argument with them but the air of the building changed. Word had spread quickly through the Orange Legion of the drunk their Praetor would be protecting. Such scum did not deserve to even breathe the same air as their glorious leader. None deserved the Praetor's life laid down in favor of saving their own. The Uzumaki Empire would obtain greatness only with a leader like him. We need time to prepare with the Centurions of the Third so this will be the last subject of the meeting. Naruto didn't continue. I'll keep this brief as we all would like. Sasuke stepped forward and laid his helmet on the table before him. The two Tomo red eyes slowly looked over the centurions gathered before him. My century will be visible at all times as I and Praetor Naruto agreed with upon learning of our mission. The rest of the third will be sent in advance, leaving tonight, to march to our destination through different routes, or held in reserve. Proper communication and swift updates is vital between the Centurions of the Third so we'll be making use of a supply of wireless communicators. Each Centurion will be presented one to remain in contact with the others. You'll all be specified a channel along with the main one we'll be making use of during the march. Similar communication devices have already been handed out to the Centurions in charge of the second and fourth cohorts. They've been responsible for testing it for use by the entire army. We've made good use of them with our scouts and relaying the location of the trash we fight. Most of the time the filthy bandits don't even know we're about to wipe them out until half of them are dead and the other half dying from our attack. The centurion at the head of the second cohort tapped his ear, a black wire leading from it down into his armor. No modifications were needed for our helmets either. The communication devices will be distributed tonight by the soldiers of my century. Sasuke seemed to have finished all he needed to say, the legate of the Orange Legion stepping back as Naruto stepped forward yet again. That's all for this meeting. His eyes once again cast their gaze over all those inside the building. The third cohort is to prepare to march tonight. The rest of you continue may continue what you've always done. Do not bring dishonor to my legion in my brief absence. Who? The centurions answered as one bringing a fist up to their chest over their hearts before turning and filing out of the building. Soon only the Praetor and his legate stood in the emptied building. That didn't go as bad as I thought. Sasuke rested a hand on the blade he wore at his side as he and Naruto stood side by side in front of the table. They don't know what he said. Good point. The legate of the Orange Legion reached underneath the table and drew out a map of Nami no Kuni and laid it out on the table. A glance revealed it was heavily marked already with numerous numbered orange trails leading from Kanoha to various sites. Several lead from different parts of Hai no Kuni and seem to pulse with a deep light even no. I brief parts of the third cohort on your plan before the meeting. Some of the legion's more experienced centuries have already begun the march to Nami no Kuni. They'll be there before we set out at the pace they set and will be responsible for setting up a main camp for us. They won't advance further than that through, mainly just out to the surrounding lands and secure supply routes with patrols. Red eyes met blue once they looked up from the map. I delivered your orders exactly Praetor. Good. Naruto leaned forward on the table, his blue eyes leaving Sasuke's to look on with joy at the sight of the pulsing orange lines. This is exactly what the third needs after what happened during the bell test with Silver Fong. The cold stone of his eyes had bled away long ago but now something else entered them. Remorse at what he had done. My order that day haunts me still. So much of the third lost because I couldn't handle the pressure. I feel like a fool more and more as I return to the battle that day. The third has suffered but it will endure. They are my soldiers now and none will fall to the tragedy of that day. Both knew what the second in command spoke of. It was said in private among the other cohorts of the Orange Legion, the decimation of the third. Countless centurions lost, centuries suffering heavy casualties across the board, and the slaying of the third's head centurion. Leadership was still in chaos, many experienced soldiers having been moved around to try and find the balance between the experienced and the new recruits they now had to deal with as an attempt was made to mitigate the worst of the damage. Rumors had abounded for hours, until their arrival that night which spoke of the third having been entirely wiped out and their standard destroyed. Both had been false but one had nearly become true if not for the bravery of three centurions. They had returned to the battlefield with hardly thirty men between them and retrieved the still standing standard, 
held aloft by the head centurion before he had perished from many wounds. The decimation of the third would live in infamy among the ranks of the Orange Legion for a very long time. It was a tale of both crushing defeat and of great glory. Triumph and sacrifice. Loss and gain to a brutal degree. I hope you aren't lying. Achiha don't bother with a thing like that, we have more pride in our word than any other clan. The eyes that thousands had wielded before him seemed to take on something else as he looked down at the map. Power came from them that made Naruto grin. If we swear to do something, we will do it and I intend to hold myself to that. Don't disappoint me Legate. I won't preter. The night passed in a conference of strategy, dawn far away when several centuries of the third marched out from the village in near silence. It had been practiced, a more covert marching of parts of the Orange Legion in order to catch enemies unaware. Now it was put to work. You know your orders. The rest of the third will be counting on you. Your Praetor will be counting on you. Do not fail. The voice of their legate, his status as the leader of the third known to the clones that made it up, crackled in the ears of the centurions. We will not. They spoke quietly but as one. They marched individually but their steps fell together. They breathed as one. Hundreds of hearts beat as one. A conviction like no other burned within the eyes of them all as sapphire flames that would burn and destroy all before them. They were legion. All of them had made a silent promise. They would never fail again. I still can't believe a bunch of kids are going to be responsible for protecting me. Tazuna had seemingly taken many doses of liquid courage the last night judging by the way he hardly stood properly or could remove one hand from his head. He leaned against the wall because it was his only support thanks to unwilling legs. I should be getting at least some teenagers, maybe some of that eye candy you've got around here. The real women that aren't afraid to show what they got. The way his hands moved to his chest, as if holding large balls in front of him, made the entirety of Team 7 sigh. This is going to be a long mission. The four members of Team 7 were in unison in that moment. I've got it to deal with you kids. Kids. Don't you know who I am? I'm the man who's going to build the bridge that's going to save Nami no Kuni. I'm the greatest bridge builder to ever live and I'm stuck with some kids to guard me on my way back. Ha 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 ha. The man finally nearly fell onto his back in a drunken fit of laughter. He was only saved by Kakashi grabbing hold of the back of his pack, appearing behind the man silently to do so. Distaste filled his eyes for the briefest moment before it was gone and he patted Tazuna on the shoulder as he sat him back down. Naruto, how far away are your clones from the village now? Your centurion is present. Who? Not far. Naruto allowed himself a moment to grin to himself at the sight of what happened next. Tazuna really did fall on his ass this time, his drunken stupor suddenly gone as the group of five was surrounded on all sides by blondes identical to the blonde standing in front of him. The genin of Team 7 didn't even bother sparing him a glance as one stepped forward. Centurion. Sasuke let his fist fall over his heart as his Sharingan met the blue eyes of the clone in charge of his century for the most part. Legit. The centurion answered in turn before he reached to his side and held something out to Sasuke. Preter informed you of what this is, correct? He did. Sasuke didn't bother taking the object. It belongs to you still. Understood. His hand was withdrawn and the object was returned to his side. Sakura, your blossom guards? All of them are nearby. I spread them out since you told me about the century you were bringing with us. Then we may depart at our leisure. Naruto looked to Kakashi, the jonin going over the blonde with his single visible critical eye. He hemmed to himself for a moment as something was revealed in his analysis that only he could see before he turned towards Tazuna. Get up. The bridge builder hastily complied. The man who had been a soldier in war as a child spoke and the civilian listened without question. Naruto, half of your men should keep an eye on him at all times. The other half are those you may do as you please with. That's my only order for this mission outside combat. You don't have to worry about that silver fong since my legate will be responsible for leading the man's defense if we are to come under attack by anything from bandits to rogue shinobi. He understands the risk and knows what to do with his men to keep the drunk safe. I'm glad for the vote of confidence Preter. Sasuke turned his attention back to his men. Ten at minimum are to maintain a perimeter around the bridge builder. The rest of you fan out around the rest of us and march in a perimeter. Who? 
The march to Nami no Kuni was cut short hardly a day into it. Halt! Sasuke stood at the front of his century, a single arm raised to bring them all to a halt with a tremendous clang as their shields were lowered and their armored feet came together. First Contraburnium, on me. Sasuke drew his sword as he began to slowly walk forward, the two first rows of five following him. They slowly spread out, forming a V with the Uchiha at the head and five of the clones under his command standing behind each other on either side. They began a slow jog down the path ahead of them. Centurion, where is the legate taking the first? The centurion stood at the head of the column with the remaining clones with him. Shields were embedded into the ground around them and more than one sword was grasped at the hilt, the clones of the third uneasy as they restrained themselves from holding their weapons at the ready. He told me he discovered something further down the road with his Sharingan. The centurion spoke no more just as the sounds of combat reached them all. Immediately weapons were drawn and shields were wrenched out of the ground and held at the ready as many clones on the sides of the formation turned. They formed a wall that engulfed the formation as others stood at the ready to engage whatever assault from any side. Second. Advance on me. Third, stay at the ready for my signal. The rest of you defend this road to the last. The centurion at the head of the third was already moving, taking off at a run as he placed his helmet on his head and drew his sword. Who? The clones of the Orange Legion came upon the sight of the legate of the army standing above two restrained men. The net, a number of chakra reinforced pylum crossed across each other to entrap limbs and bodies, keeping them from moving at all in addition to the soldiers that stood with swords drawn. The centurion recognized them as the demon brothers, missing mean from Kiri that had been employed by only one man since going rogue. Zabuza Momoichi. Sasuke nodded to the centurion's observation as he returned his sword to his side and retrieved his scratched shield from where it laid on top of a chain of shuriken. Inform Praetor Naruto of this development. You heard him. Who? Several of the clones raced off to inform Naruto of the news as Sasuke and the Centurion observed the barely conscious missing mean. What should we do with them? Wait for Praetor's orders. Sasuke moved back to a tree out of the way, leaning his back against it as his red and black eyes roved over the trees that stood nearby. He was searching for someone or something and the specifics of what was lost on the Centurion with him. He will know what is best to do. The clones under Sasuke's command had finally lit the beacon from the burning smell that reached his nose. It was at last thrown high into the air and almost instantly it was replaced. Shouts reached them as more were thrown and they vanished just the same. Praetor and his Praetorians had at last arrived it seemed. Praetor. The Centurion, the clones with him, and Sasuke himself all offered the salute of the Orange Legion to Naruto and his Praetorians as they emerged from the trees around them. Legate. Centurion. Naruto and his guards offered the same as he wordlessly dismissed all but one to the perimeter with a wave of his hand. I trust you've gotten my report. Yes. It seems this is more of a challenge than I originally thought. Naruto stood with his legate next to him as he observed the captured demon brothers. His eyes stayed locked on them but his mind drifted to countless new strategies to do battle with such a foe with. Zabuza Momoichi is no laughing matter. He will be a great challenge for the third to overcome on this path. I will send word to the centurions you sent ahead Praetor. They will need to be informed of this development. The legate of the Orange Legion stepped away at that, leaving the Praetor to his thoughts as more than enough of his century was left behind just in case the Demon Brothers had aid. Scouts would need to learn to be more thorough if that was the case. Hmm, I feel strangely left out. Kakashi stood with his hands in his pockets in a tree, his sole visible eye focused on the genin before him. The man who had copied over a thousand techniques, risen through the ranks through tragedy during a time of war, and become a near legend on the battlefields he roamed looked on at the genin that had motivated him to begin training much harder than he ever had in a long time after his performance in the bell test. He felt almost ashamed at how far he had allowed himself to fall during a time of peace, during his personal descent into despair. You should have called me over as well Naruto. This is a mission of the Orange Legion Hataki-san. Naruto did not look away from the Demon Brothers nor did he raise his voice much. It is to be either our glory or our shame. None else should face the trials ahead of us besides my men. Hmm, you really don't understand teamwork too well do you, Naruto? 
Kakashi didn't move from the tree as he sensed more than a dozen or so of the clones surround the tree and arm themselves with the pylums they seemed so fond of. They would most likely try to entrap him again with them. I'm the Jonin Sensei of Team 7, that makes all of your glory and shame mine. If you fail, I fail just like if you succeed, I succeed. You do not understand Silver Fong. Naruto moved his helmet to stare down into the hollow expanse within. Gently he ran a single hand over the metal's smooth surface. You will never understand why this must be done by my legion above any others. Zabuza Momoichi must fall to the blades we hold alone so we may lay claim to that cruel distant dream called glory. Do I need to join your legion to get you to listen to me Naruto? The Praetor listens to none but himself Hataki-san. His failures are his just as his successes are his. Naruto turned away from the demon brothers and to the tree Kakashi resided in. An empty smile stretched across his face as blue eyes looked into those of an enemy and friend in Silver Fong. I must redeem my own failures through this challenge. I won't let you die on my watch because of your pride. I shall not die. The march to Nami no Kuni resumed without future issues. The demon brothers had vanished before they could be retrieved by shinobi called for by Kakashi and now the third cohort of the Orange Legion came to a stop behind their Praetor, Legate, and Sakura-chan who stood behind Kakashi. He had raised a single hand into the air, clenched into a fist, as they looked out over the river they would now need to cross. He looked to Tizuna for answers, the bridge builder standing behind the three genin that made up the majority of Team 7. Tazuna, what's your plan to get across this river? Kakashi stood with both his hands placed in his pockets and was lax to any toddler that may have observed him. To anyone else he was a coiled spring that demanded answers lest he simply kill a nuisance. I don't remember this being in the briefing you gave us. The papers smelled a bit too strong by the way. Aye aye. The Orange Legion has already considered a method of crossing Silver Fong. Naruto grinned from where he stood in front of Tazuna. He stepped forward and pointed towards the riverbanks where a single soldier of the Orange Legion had emerged, a bright blue burning torch held above his head. An army does not swim across a river such as this. They march. Indeed they do Naruto. Kakashi allowed himself a short laugh as he spotted more of Naruto's clones emerge and begin to pull on ropes that went beneath the current of the river. Within moments segments of a number of fallen trees tied together were raised from the depths of the water and the ropes were tied taut to buried supports in the ground. This process happened on both sides of the river as Kakashi's ears caught the ever-present sound of marching beginning once again. I guess the rest of your army is going to be following after us? There are more bridges Silver Fong. The Orange Legion does not only allow ourselves one way of entry and exit. Naruto's words were true as Kakashi could catch sight of at least three more tree bridges raised from the depths of the river and secured to hidden supports along the banks. He also spotted what had to be at least a hundred or so of Naruto's clones spread out behind the trees merely watching the approaching forces. Hmm, you kids use quality trees. Not too good through since I reckon you want them not to last long underwater. Give it a good treatment and actually build the damn things with actually frames and support and you'll have a couple of mighty fine bridges. Tazuna in that moment gained respect from the genin. He was a drunk, crass, blunt, overall pathetic man but he seemed to truly know his craft and had a rare passion for it. Could I have misjudged you? Doesn't change the fact you'll never compare to the great bridge I'll be building once we get to my house. The bridge builder could so quickly return to his previous level just by opening his mouth. No. No I did not. By nightfall Tazuna was returned to his house while the shinobi camped outside for now. Naruto and Sasuke retired to a tent as a table was set in front of them by several men of the Orange Legion that were wordlessly dismissed. The silhouettes of the numerous Praetorians marching around not only the camp itself and the tent he currently resided in but the house of Tazuna and his family as well could dimly be seen thanks to the numerous fires set by the Orange Legion. Legate Sasuke, what is our strategy here? Naruto looked to his second in the Orange Legion and the Uchiha offered him a confident smirk as he brought a closed fist over his heart. The detachments of the third cohort we've sent ahead have established a base camp not far from the river we crossed around sunset. The house of the client has been watched over by a minimum shift of three decanus and their men at all times. Scouts have been dispatched and are exploring the surrounding areas for both information and supplies. 
several detachments have advanced deeper into Nami no Kuni as requested and have reported every night as ordered. Sasuke dropped his fist from over his heart and drew out a scroll from a holder at his back. They have reported troubling news you must hear Preter. Allow me to see it then. Naruto extended his hand and Sasuke dropped the scroll into it without a second thought. The seal of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire was opened and Naruto unrolled it without circumstance. As he read over the report from his scouts his eyes briefly widened before narrowing as he cast the scroll onto the table once he was finished. This is. He had no words and instead released a mirthless laugh. The third steps from one inferno into another it seems. They will face the demon of the mist within days it seems. Or they cannot. His legate immediately had his attention as he rolled the scroll back up and pressed it into the table where it simply vanished into it. The report states that a shipping magnate known as Gato is responsible for Zabuza Momoichi's presence in the region. If the money the man has is repossessed for other purposes, then he stands no chance of retaining Zabuza's services for much longer. Silver Fong, while a bane to the Orange Legion, is well known and will require a substantial sum to engage to kill a simple bridge builder. I see. Naruto's eyes roved over the map stretched across the table, pulled taut at either end. He leaned forward and blue eyes took in the information present as red and black observed him. You aim to strike at the cash assets of Gato now? I wish to lead a number of centuries tonight if possible by your orders Preter. Sasuke looked down towards the map on the table instead of at the leader of the Uzumaki Empire. I have ordered the spread of the men under my command across the territory Gato rules. They will not fully engage the enemy and instead aim to capture the numerous cash reserves Gato has across the land. The men look to impress several ships into the navy of the Uzumaki Empire as well Preter. At those words, a grin covered the lips of both. The prospect of such gains and such minimal loses were very enticing, but neither were foolhardy after the battle with Silver Fong not too long ago. I will lead the attack on Gato's personal headquarters come morning and bring you his head if you wish. Such filth does not deserve to have such an honor. Naruto's words brought a dark grin to Sasuke's face. Kill him and his thugs. ISH dash, his promise was interrupted when the tent flap burst open and Sakura rushed in. Naruto, Sasuke, something's happened. I see then. Naruto looked at the picture laid before him of a happy family of three. A beautiful woman stood next to a man with a young boy in her arms, one reaching out with arms he could not yet fully control for the smiling man in the picture with them. Inari. Tsunami. Kaiza. Three names were all they were supposed to be to the blonde-haired Jenin looking at them but they had so quickly become something more. Somehow three names had become something precious to him and he didn't know how to feel about that. His legate stood with him, the centurion of his praetorian stood with him, his lovely Sakurachan stood with him and all three were expecting him to do something. Like I said before Naruto, it's you call since it's your army. Kakashi played the role of the dispassionate Jonin. His tone was somehow lethargic with every word he spoke, his hands were in his pockets like always, and his single visible eye looked around the room without interest. He never did look at the picture on the table. The Orange Legion. His voice trailed off before he could finish. The genin brought a hand up to his face and rubbed at his eyes. I'm sorry, I am tired. A decision can always be reached later in the morning. Sasuke spoke his piece. It was one short and simple. The Orange Legion already had plans to destroy Gato's funds and the man himself, the unexpected nature of Kaiza's situation would not change any of those plans in his eyes. The Merchant Baron would still fall before the might of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire. Plans must be made regardless, troops must be moved, supplies gathered, and attacks planned. No matter what choice you make Preter it is unlikely to take effect tonight. He also could still lie, something perhaps made better with so little words. I know that very well Legate. Naruto looked towards the picture again. It was something that was like a siren to him, unable to pull away from the call it had on him. He wanted nothing more than to break the frame and torch the photograph inside but his body would not follow his commands. He found himself gingerly holding the image in his hands instead of smashing it to pieces as he wished to do. He did nothing to it despite wishing to see it destroyed and the plague it was on his mind erased. Do not think to question how well I know the capabilities of my own army. Of course Preter, forgive me. 
Sasuke seemed to understand he had stepped out of line and retreated half a step behind the undisputed leader of the Uzumaki Empire and all facets of it. I meant no disrespect with my words towards you or your great Orange Legion. I am not petty legged. Naruto's words were distant as he turned indecipherable blue eyes to the bridge builder they were to protect with their lives. You, Tazuna, tell me why I should devote my forces to rescuing this Kaiza from thugs? Why should I not order you to have your workers, his comrades, do such a thing? I won't lie to you, not anymore at least, but those men aren't the best. Tazuna was surprisingly not drunk. He hadn't touched the bottle since they had crossed the border into Nami no Kuni. The best, the ones we used to have in droves, are scared in their homes. They're trying to provide for their families while this old man tries to build something to get Gato's hands out from around our necks. The men that were here were only here for a few more days at the most since I was going to bring in real builders to help me but... He stopped as he rubbed at his throat. No doubt he knew about the kill order. I figured an old man's got to do what he's got to do but I'm not as dumb as I look. Half the folks who mean well wouldn't know how to read a blueprint without me there and those that do probably couldn't do much. Kai's is the only man I can trust in this place to keep the project on time once I'm gone. He'll be the only hope to make sure Gato doesn't have control of Nami no Kuni forever. I see. Naruto allowed something to enter his eyes then. Tazuna had once again worked his way back up the ranks in his mind. Leg it. The single word instantly brought Sasuke to attention, his hand fell to the hilt of his sword and his free arm came up to his chest. Centurion. The leader of his Praetorians was the same as the Uchiha. The tone Naruto spoke with let both know he was about to issue an order they would have no other desire than to complete. Tell the third to prepare themselves in full. We shall face battle soon. I shall do as you wish Praetor. The centurion left the room to the camp at that. He had work to do to get the men of the third in fighting shape. Legate, you are to begin your operations as soon as possible. Naruto's eyes held an intensity that made Kakashi silently approve. Show the filth of this land why they will not stand to the might of the Uzumaki Empire and the mighty Orange Legion. Show them all how we shall not tolerate their presence any longer. I shall do as you command Praetor. The legate of the Orange Legion spoke no more as he turned and left the room. His black and red eyes were focused on the task at hand as he brought a hand up to the hidden communication device in his ear. Praetor has approved the plan. Begin the attack. Finally Naruto turned to Sakura. Remain here Sakura-chan. My Praetorians and I will soon bring Kaiza back here. Naruto's hand fell to his sword as he walked towards the door. Your Blossom Guards shall watch over all in this home for tonight as long as you remain within. Naruto, what happened to you? It was a strange thought to have as she grazed at the orange cloak at his back as he walked away. It was still difficult to see Naruto as anyone but the worst student from the academy but that stance had gradually changed the more and more she saw of the blonde. He wasn't an idiot. He wasn't as loud as he was every day when they were being taught by Irika sensei He was just as confident judging by the way he lead his orange legion day in and day out. He was smarter than he ever led on judging by just how well coordinated his troops were, how well they functioned as more of a machine than individuals at times. He cared for her despite everything she had done to him when they were at the academy. He had trained a century of his Orange Legion to protect her without even knowing she would accept them in the end, he just wanted to make sure she was safe. What happened to you? Sakura-chan. One of her Blossom Guards snapped her out of her thoughts, he offered his arm to her as two others sealed the door to the house behind Naruto once he walked out. More stood around the house and she knew more gathered outside and watched them all. Praetor wishes you to remain safe during this night. Come with me to your rooms. Of course. Her emerald eyes focused on the door for a moment longer before they met the identical blue eyes of her guard as the genin on her mind. Make sure to watch Tsunami-san and Inari too. We shall. She heard the clinking of steel against steel outside despite how much the walls dampened the noise. Kakashi heard it too judging by the way he focused Chakra to his ears to hear the movements of Naruto's men better. Most of them were probably moving out in every direction while some would stay here to set up a true camp for war. Leg at present, have some pride boys. The centurion Naruto had selected to lead his century in his absence stood at the ready, his shield on his arm and his sword at his side with the majority of the clones in his personal force with him. Ten stood apart from the rest, 
the clones he would personally lead into battle against the scum-plaguing Nami no Kuni. Centurion, take the majority of our forces and run through the nearby town. Draw them away and have our archers pick them off as you do so. I'll come in behind them and while the fools are in disarray send what you can to finish the job. Take the rest with you and look for stragglers while you establish the perimeter as is protocol. I'll gather any of the men you send and sweep within the formation. Once we meet up we'll move forward to the next. Sasuke's plan was simple. A century was moving in a general area of Nami no Kuni, assigned to them before they had left Hai no Kuni, and had divided themselves in half for the most part. Each area could be cleared of the majority of bandits, low lives, and thugs in several hours by the divided century as they marched to link up. Eventually, their movements would funnel them together to take down larger concentrations of bandits which would already be in disarray thanks to the Praetorians of the Third that would have already begun attacking. In short, by daylight, Nami no Kuni would be the territory of the Orange Legion's Third Cohort. Everyone ready? Sasuke looked to the clones of the Third. Eyes of steel and anxiousness for battle answered him. He drew his blade with a grin as he pointed it forward. March! Who? Orders have come in from command. The centurion stood among the leaders of the contraburniums of his century as he removed his finger from his ear and he grinned. Move out immediately. No mercy. Show this filth the might of Praetor's mighty legion. Who? Each saluted with a clenched fist over their hearts before drawing their swords and bearing their shields on steady arms. Let's go! He took up his own arms in his hands and quickly his soldiers rose from where they sat in waiting and followed after him eager for battle. The bandit encampment below them would never have a chance. Fan out. First, second, and third on me. The rest of you encircle and enclose. He quickly barked out his orders and while never breaking stride they seamlessly fell into formation around him. They rushed forward and broke the tree lines as the others moved around, encircling the camp with pylum in hands and shields held in firm grips. The fleeing bandits would crash upon steel like water on rocks and their bodies would crash into jagged stone in the pylum they held at the ready. Who? They clashed their arms together before beginning a march forward, gaining the eyes of many of the already terrified bandits on them. One step after the other. A man who stood in ranks was to never stop moving forward as a soldier of the Orange Legion. It was a pattern that had been drilled into them in training and something they could do instinctively be in in battle or just upon awakening. It was all part of their final test after all. Twin rows were wordlessly formed, each man of the Great Orange Legion knew precisely where they needed to be in their formation and fell into it without question. Half were placed in the front in the first row and half were placed in the rear in the second row and both held their arms at the ready. Pylum were vicious things in trained hands and accurate even in relatively untrained ones. Pylum. At the order they threw the weapon forward and a line of fleeing bandits rushing out from the camp was ruthlessly torn down as a new projectile appeared in each of their hands without a moment wasted. It was also a thing accomplished through training. Pylum. Another wave of pylum traveled through the air launched by both waves and the field was dotted with them this time but no new bandits were claimed in name of the Uzumaki Empire. First. Draw swords. Who? The two rows were used for a reason. Another wave approached and was cut down to half across the distance as shields were jammed into the ground and pylums impaled where they stood while their hands flew to the hilts of their blades and drew them forth. Shields were returned to their place on the arms of the man it belonged to and they hunched over slightly. Excitement ripped through the ranks despite any attempt to suppress it and remain clear-headed in the heat of battle. It was an impossible thing to do to the third despite any training they received before deployment in Nami no Kuni. It was hopeless to numb the desire for glory, the pride they felt every moment they stood in ranks, the exhilaration they felt the moment before every clash of blades. To take those things away would destroy what made the Orange Legion a soon-to-be-feared force. To destroy those things would make them nothing more than mindless puppets. The Orange Legion was as based on individual independence as it was based on the power of many joined to one. Substitute. Who? The first row vanished as the second stepped forward, wordlessly accepting the extra pair of pylum to each from the first. They drew back and awaited the order to fire once again. The orange cloak of the centurion was visible to all as he withdrew from combat. 
Three men instantly moved to stand as a wall of steel with their swords at the ready before him as his sword was exchanged for a unique pilum issued only to centurions. It was thrown into the air and lit into a blazing orange flare that was a new order. Swords were drawn as the pilum in their hands and before them disappeared. No time was wasted before the second row charged forth across the distance and joined the first in battle. The battle goes well? Indeed Legate. The centurion overlooked the corpses being piled by his century. A dozen bandits had been easily waylaid into a trap by a handful of shouting men and had paid for their foolishness to commit such acts on land soon to be held by the Uzumaki Empire. We've killed five dozen of the filth by now. Good. Continue. As you wish Legate. The centurion removed his hand from his ear and instead turned to the men awaiting his orders. He gave them with his bloodied sword drawn and a grin on his face. March. Who? This is it? The centurion in charge of a century of the third looked on with distaste as his men held the dozen or so bandits holding the town before him. The Uzumaki Empire was great and unknown for now but the level of opposition to their attack was pathetic. Any attacker, no matter the words spoken by them, should be met with the same force as legends would be. To think any less of the Orange Legion simply because word had not already spread to them was deserving of only one sentence. Slay them and we'll continue onward. He could handle his disgust as long as glory laid with the Orange Legion and the lands belonged to the illustrious Praetor by dawn. Who? Swords were drawn, screams were ignored, and blood ran. The centurion had already stepped forward to the front of the column and issued his order. The men of the Orange Legion began their march anew and soon the next bandit camp would fall to their blades. Soon Nami no Kuni itself would belong to Praetor and the Uzumaki Empire. Halt! Far away, deeper in Nami no Kuni, a centurion rose his clenched fist into the air and the column he marched at the head of instantly came to a halt. He looked upon the defenses arrayed against him and his soldiers of the Orange Legion and felt a strange combination. It was made of two things. One was simple pride at the men of the Legion for it being so ineffective and the other was rage at the nature of the barricade to his progress. What shall we do Centurion? Bring down that gate. A single piece of artillery should do. The Centurion could hardly find it in himself to simply shake his head at the meager defenses arrayed against the soldiers of the mighty Orange Legion. A shack had better defensive walls than the village in front of him, a wooden fence that had long ago succumbed to the cruel passage of time. Where once it was undoubtedly great, it was now nothing but a pathetic obstacle to stop him and his men in their campaign. The wall was plated in rough iron but its hinges were laid in now rotted wood. A single piece of artillery tore it away without much opposition. Forward. Precautions were still in place despite anything they may feel. Ranks were held and a detachment with the centurion at the head charged forward into the smoke hanging in the broken frame. Shields were held at the ready, swords held as they were trained to hold them, and the ranks closed swiftly behind the last men to rush through them. Pilum were raised behind the first line and armed. Artillery was readied in the front and another century would already be smashing into the back of the large if poorly defended bandit town. Reports showed hundreds would be inside the walls and so the intent was not to take the den of filth in a single charge. A staging ground was needed on each end for both centuries to sweep through the town. The gate would be one and a rear wall in disrepair would do the same for the other century once the attention of the bandits was on them alone. His sword bit into flesh and his shield knocked away spears that could do nothing against his armor even if they were allowed to pass. He was the first on through the breach in the gates of course, his shield blocking blow after blow against him from the awaiting bandits as he pressed onward. A centurion could not stop, could not hesitate in battle with the enemies of the Uzumaki Empire. All must fall to them or the century would fall, the cohort would fall, the legion itself would fall if they fell. A centurion only ever pressed forward without doubt. His sword cleaved through the shaft of a pitchfork and cut into the chest of the man wielding it without hassle. The bandits did not wear armor. They fell quickly to his second strike before his shield was risen to throw aside the strike of two when he threw himself forward and into his next lunge. He turned suddenly, two swords dotting over his back as he crouched down and felling two bandits with the blade slipped through their throats. A pullback and a three-man line was formed to weather any storm thrown against them. Pilum surged forward as the two stepped to the side to allow them through and burst through the flesh of more bandits. 
They were left there as the arms withdrew and with a mighty bash from their shields they were tossed aside without issue. Hissing filled the air moments later. Shields. Three shields were embedded into the ground and three followed on top, two followed on either. A dome was created that withstood the numerous blasts that followed. If the attention of the filth weren't already focused on him and his men, it was now. Ready yourself for the next batch of trash men. The centurion took hold of his shield as the one placed on top was withdrawn and the ranks expanded to a single curved row of ten. The curve laid inward and towards the gate behind them. Ten shields and with them ten blades was all that would be needed to hold the breach they stood before as the men of his century laid ladders on the wall and surged up them. Who? A great number of pylum soared silently over the treetops before cascading down with the only sound they brought the gentle whisper of death to the 36 bandits that had been discovered by scouts. A centurion observed from the branches of a tree as the bandits that had made camp in the forest were slain down to the last before he rose his fist up. A dozen of his men stood around the branches with him and wordlessly they vanished without trace. The rest of the century would be informed and told to advance forward. He silently took up and fired a pylum when one, a drunk, staggered back in and would have sobered at the sight of the dead. In the end he died as he lived, nothing but a filthy wretch. This trash is unworthy of the legion's blades. He spoke more to himself than someone else and wordlessly exited the trees in a single leap and landed before the marching column of his century. Immediately they came to an abrupt stop, lowering shields slightly to salute with a clenched fist placed over their hearts. He returned it as he rose to his feet and looked towards the soldier he left in charge. Without the need for verbal prompting he began his report. My centurion, the men are ready to march and word has reached us of the movements of Legate nearby. Do you wish for us to join him? The Legate is capable. He didn't speak to a single man, he spoke instead to nearly a hundred as he turned to face the road. We will move and make sure he does not come under assault from cowards trailing behind our mighty legion. Who? Is this all they have? Naruto looked towards the forces arrayed against him and his Praetorians. It was a pathetic sight to see such poorly armed bandits stand against the gleaming armor and razor-sharp blades of his most elite soldiers. It was something that was almost sickening to know he would need to waste time here with such pathetic excuses for warriors. Most of them had seen fit to spend their time terrorizing children without end and some were simply bullies. The sight of his legion had sent them running for the hills until they had come to believe they outnumbered him. He had sent half of his Praetorians around the village of course and they would slaughter them from the rear once the attack began in full. The bandits of course did not know that or else they would have tried to at least take a better position instead of the main road. The idiotic filth didn't know and so didn't think of better tactics and Naruto felt his rage grow. We must fight such filth to truly claim these lands as our own. How sickening to believe these creatures once held the fear of the people in their hands. He turned to his men without another moment wasted and looked into eyes that were identical to his own, faces that carried the same features, and the same soul dwelled within them all. He saw a will few could even dream of boasting of having and determination none but he himself possessed in this world. It made him forget his distaste for now as he focused on what needed to be done above all else. Parasites must be removed from the lands he had claimed as his own. A black mark here was a black mark on the Uzumaki Empire and such a thing could not be allowed. Nami no Kuni is a diseased land. A cruel rottenness has spread through it at the speed of rampaging beasts because of one man, the source of this great infection on our land. He is a parasite that commands power through the material things. He holds no true strength not purchased by his vast wealth. He holds fear because of his paid thugs. He lies like a rat on the land which has been claimed for the Uzumaki Empire. He is little more than trash, filth not fit to even march through. Who? Nami no Kuni is diseased because of the man named Gato. Who? He holds lands of the Uzumaki Empire in captivity through fear and terror but no longer. Who? He faces the wrath of the mighty Orange Legion. He faces the wrath of the Uzumaki Empire. He faces each and every one of you. Who? He placed on his helmet and drew his sword with a grin. His Praetorians mirrored it as he turned and rose his shield up and held it at the ready. Let us show him what it means to face our great orange legion. Let us show him what it means to face death. Who? Forward. Death came for those before the legion and mercy was a beast foreign to the specter none may see until the end of their days. 
The halls of its home would shortly be filled with the unworthy souls before the gathered men of the Legion until they were all cast off to the depths where they belonged. The Orange Legion would see to it as they fought towards the ever-distant dream of glory. Shields were raised and blades held in eager hands as the first bandits were bled and fell. Before they could rise as the men at the head passed over, blades from those behind pierced their flesh and sent them to the halls of the dead. A dozen pylums soared overhead, explosive tags trailing behind them and sending the lines of bandits scurrying. The dead were ripped apart and the living turned to the dying as the Praetorians advanced without pause. Naruto lead them at the front, his blade eager and thirsting for the blood of even such impure foes. His blade darted forward, past his shield, and ripped forth more blood from the trash before him as their throat was opened. He drew back and he felt his shield be struck by a thrown rock of all things. He laughed at such pathetic projectiles. Pylum. Who? His sword was sheathed for now and as one those who held blades replaced them with the projectile of the Orange Legion. Aiming took no more than a second, the act of drawing back one's arm was well practiced and his Praetorians would not accept any degree of slowness. Their targets were selected and now they all merely awaited his order. Fire. Who? Death surged forth by the might of their arms and more bandits fell to the might of his Orange Legion. The sight of such devastation of the enemy made him grin as he heard more scream or beg for mercy. Some even tried to bribe the men who saw them as little more than trash already. They could not even face death with dignity. Bandits were scum the Orange Legion would not tolerate and the way their blades never ceased showed the conviction every man he commanded held. It was near music to his ears. Is this all they can muster Praetor? His centurion stood next to him, chuckling at such a paltry resistance and he found himself doing the same. Let us hope they may fight better when we stand before their doorstep. Naruto drew his sword once again and his eyes cast back to look at the forces arrayed behind him. Move out. Who? Their march swiftly turned into a run down the bloody streets. His men were well trained and his Praetorians were better as swift minute movements of his arm directed the men to separate, take different paths to further smash the bandits' presence in the town and leave them without a foothold for what would become the center of his control of Nami no Kuni. The Uzumaki Empire would not accept filth like this in the lands they held under their control. Shields. His centurion strode forward as he spoke, a line of men separated him from the front as shadows fell when steel was raised from above to the face the sky. He felt the heat of the flames as flaming bottles were thrown, their contents failing to pass through the shields of the Orange Legion's Praetorians as they defended their Praetor. More objects pounded the shields but none could pass through the barrier of steel and, if it was ever needed, flesh, to reach him. Heavy artillery. His centurion's voice rose above the roar and crackle of the flames and instantly his orders were followed as the shields held strong the formation shifted to open in the center where three of the more precise throwers threw forth three pylum. Explosive tags once again trailed behind them but much more than ever before. They sizzled as they soared through the air and fell onto the bandits responsible for the flames just as the formation closed. The blast was truly massive by the centurion knew it would be so. Praetor had already been pushed back deeper into the formation, shields were embedded into the ground through their spikes and braced with the body of Praetorians. Those above lowered into a solid ceiling above as they were connected through mechanism placed along the edges of the shields. He himself stood in the middle, his flesh would be the last line of defense for Praetor if the shield would fail but it would not. They had practiced the formation dozens of times. They had yet to allow Praetor to be struck by shrapnel at far closer ranges. The blast washed over them and they did not falter. Retake shields. Who? The formation was shattered as the shields that had become interlocked were pulled away and returned to the arms that held them. Praetor returned to the front as the men stepped back and rejoined the centurion and, Despite the look in his blue eyes, he offered the centurion a pat on the shoulder. I am not made of glass my friend. Praetorians are to protect you always Praetor. Humor flowed at the surface but the Praetor did not like their protocol still and it was clear to them all in that moment. He had allowed the creation of the Praetorians to ensure his safety in battle but did not like just how much he was prioritized in battle above all others. At times he feared that the very standard of the Orange Legion fell second to the man that created it. Praetor never wished to find out if he was right. Forward. A voice called out from ahead of them, 
The Praetorian sent around through the alleys must have made it to the headquarters of the bandits as the sounds of battle, swords striking out, shields absorbing blows meant for flesh, and the calls of men aiming to kill each other, reached them and Naruto forgot his current thoughts. They had better things to focus on for now. Let's join our brothers. You heard Preter, forward. Swords were drawn forth and the charge was retaken. The filth before them would pay the price with their blood. Is that all? The screams and din of battle had faded quickly once his century had joined the conflict with three others. The last scouted bandit stronghold before them was burning to the ground as the treasures within were piled high outside by the men of the legion under their command. Five centurions stood observing the scene and could not hide their distaste at such an easy campaign. Already dawn was beginning to break and Nami no Kuni was no longer under the control of Gato and his army of bandits and thugs. It fell to the legion with all his assets now their own with the cost extracted from the blood of the coward's men. Inventory was being taken now of the spoils of such a short war and word spread through the legion of the legate's movements deeper in the country. This is what we looked forward to facing in the great contest for glory? It seems we had too great of hopes. Piles of corpses would be burned later as warning. Any stragglers would eventually fall prey to the scouts spread across the land and would face execution for their crimes against the Uzumaki Empire by the soldiers of the Orange Legion. We should have never gotten so excited to battle filth like them. Regardless we must report to the Legate. The Centurions briefly locked eyes with each other. Who among us will report our successes? I shall abstain from glory this morning. One Centurion bowed his head as he stepped back. I am content with blood for now and words are not with me now. Another merely raised his bloodied sword. I will begin our patrols across our new lands. Do not await a swift return from me or my men. A third stepped away with a brief salute to them all with his fist over his heart. I simply do not wish to speak to him. The last stated the truth they all held in their hearts. Then I shall do it. The same centurion who had asked for volunteers now accepted his own offered task as he stepped away from the remaining centurions and headed towards a tent set up for their use. He removed his helmet as he did so and tucked it under his arm before he threw aside the tent flaps. A centurion stood within the tent, looking over a map with two fingers pressed to his exposed ears with his helmet laid on the table the map rested on. I will advise against this rash action legged. Legion scouts have yet to report back to any of our posts on what lies within or what opposition you shall face. Reports indicate bandits have drawn further and further inland the more our legion advances in this land. I advise you await reinforcements from nearby a nearby detachment of the third. No matter their numbers, the bandits will be crushed without mercy with such a great force under your command. Something was said that made him grind his teeth in response before speaking again. I understand your reasoning legate but it is not a wise decision. Silence from the centurion followed for only a moment this time. I apologize legate. I was out of line. I will contact the centurions nearby and direct them to follow your march deeper into Nami no Kuni. Silence once again greeted him from the centurion. I understand. They shall establish a rally point for your glorious return. He pulled his fingers away and hate burned in his bright blue eyes as he brought one of his fists down on the wood of the table. His teeth were bared and seemed to elongate as he held back the desire to growl at the audacity of the Uchiha Preter had given such a distinguished and powerful rank as Legate. He answered to no one but Preter himself and now such power had gone to his head. He was committed to foolishness and his pride would not allow any spoken words make him reconsider his actions. Like many others of the Orange Legion, ranging from the first to the fourth cohorts, the Centurion joined them in questioning what precisely motivated Preter to gift such a rogue element as Sasuke Uchiha the distinction of legate of the Orange Legion of the Uzumaki Empire. He had shown himself incapable of following advice from more experienced Centurions and refused to consider any views but his own when he entered the battlefield. His men were well trained, some of the best in the Legion, but a single century stood little hope against thousands. No matter the individual skill, the foolish pride of the legate would lead to endless death among them. The core of the dislike many of the centurions held for the Uchiha was rooted there actually. It was only a matter of time until his arrogance lead to something similar to the decimation of the third and if such a thing came to pass then the legate would need to perish. The Orange Legion was not a place where the pride of a singular soldier could come before the great dreams of Praetor. 
The legate seemed not to understand such a thing and every command he issued held the danger of forsaking the dream Praetor strived towards. I hate him. We all do. I will guess that you're here to report a tale of success to our great legate? Indeed though it seems he is not easy to reach now. You would not be wrong as of now. He leads a campaign none of us would support deep into unknown territory and will shortly be out of signal range. He paused as an idea came to him as he drew his helmet up and placed it on. Let us do this, leave a written report with me and we shall call it at that. While you do so I will look to save our legion from defeat and rally nearby centurions to direct their forces to rescue our legate from this folly of his. Or you could not. The centurion paused at the words from the man of equal rank and as he looked at him and saw that blue eyes held the light of cunning. As you said, he will be out of signal range shortly. Praetor himself will not know of his location due to his rash actions. Neither will any centurions wishing to assist him. They will of course rally at the camp he will abandon and await his return or await future orders. A smile slowly crossed his face as he stepped forward. Sadly, our scouts were waylaid by an unknown hazard and could not establish transmitters in such territory. The legate was left with only his century and we could only eagerly await his return to us. Yes, of course. We established a post for the third to replenish itself before entering such foreign lands and our legate wished to advance further to see what lied ahead. He did not expect a great opposition nor did he expect us to follow him into the darkness. Within that tent the two had come to a decision. The legate of the Orange Legion would either fall in unforgivable disgrace within the darkness or rise back to the light bearing true glory upon his shoulders. Silently one left to conduct his report as he had entered the tent after such words with the legate and the centurion and had only been directed to compile a record of their successes in Nami no Kuni. The other stepped away and headed to gather a number of scouts and messengers to relay orders from the legate to the rest of the third scattered across the new lands under the standard of the Uzumaki Empire's magnificent Orange Legion. Neither would be guilty of what occurred within the darkness of the unknown lands. Neither would see their heads roll either way. Well, that was simple. Naruto returned his sword to his side as the last of the bandits were gathered by his Praetorians and put to the sword. Their attempt to lure the Orange Legion into a Pyrrhic victory by burning the town before them to cinders was lost when his reserves appeared. Archers made short work of such deceitful strategies and those that remained from the initial bombardment were rounded up and quickly put to death before they could flee or reinforce the failing defenders. Centurion, gather the men and tell them to begin patrols. I will be elsewhere as I wish to speak with my legate and see his progress. He removed his helmet and observed the sun rising higher and higher in the sky. He promised me this land would be that of the legions and, with it, the empires by daybreak. Your orders shall be done Praetor. The centurion he placed in charge of his praetorians brought his closed fist to his heart and stepped away to issue out assignments. Naruto headed forward while at the same time pressing a finger to his exposed ear. Silver Fong, how goes your stay at a humble abode? I've had worse places. This is about your campaign I gather? You would be correct with such thoughts Fong. Nami no Kuni has been purged of filth unfitting for lands held by my glorious empire. I don't remember telling you to conquer Nami no Kuni, Naruto. You did not tell me not to conquer this place either Hataki Sensei. His grin was audible and the jonin let out a sigh. I suppose I didn't. You'll be explaining it all to the Hokage regardless. I'm naming you team leader. You have made a great decision this day Fong. Naruto spoke no more and cut the connection between him and the jonin that held command of Team 7. It was a well-practiced motion to switch to another channel as he stepped into a building that was once great and would soon be so again. Legate, how goes your campaign? Only the howl of static answered him and his face quickly set into one of distaste. Legate, how goes your campaign? He tried again. Static did not leave his senses and it was with a near growl that he went to a new channel. Centurions, this is your Praetor, where is my Legate at the moment? Reports indicate he has advanced into the darkness Praetor. The voice of the Centurion he had placed in charge of strategy while he did battle came to his ear and Naruto did not know if he should feel pride or annoyance at the information given to him. Centurions have established a base camp for the third where he departed and await his return. Belay such nonsense. Naruto set his helmet down on the table before him and unrolled the map. 
Part of Nami no Kuni laid in swirling shadows on the map but it was already shifting as scouts reported back with more and more information every moment. A pulsing orange beacon laid somewhere within the darkness and his eyes searched for it. Draw our scouts back and march forth into the shadows. Find my legate and tell him my orders as I speak them to you all now. Cease your advance. Withdraw to camp. Await my appearance. Am I understood? Of course, Preter. Good. He removed his finger from the wireless communication device. His good mood at such conquest was ruined by the rash actions of his legate but despite it all a small smile tugged at his lips. You were truly the best choice for my legate, weren't you Sasuke Achiha? His centurions needed a man to revile as much as they needed a leader to admire above all others. His centurions and his legion needed something to hate even when battle was not upon them and the enemy arrayed before them like lambs to the slaughter. Without such a force ever present among them, divisions he could not police through vigilance or terror would arise. Neither he nor his legion needed such matters of frivolous pride interfering in campaigns. So he presented a force to them to draw them off of such a path. Sasuke Achiha was given power high above them all as legate, unquestionable beyond he himself demanding he explain his actions. The legate encouraged hate from all those below him. It was a fact of life in many ways. His centurions would forever hate whoever held the position of legate even if it was one of their own. He named an outsider as legate because he needed their hate focused as much as their blades. His forces needed internal strife among them as much as it needed foes to destroy in combat. Centurion, have the men returned with Kaiza yet? He had sent ten of his best men to retrieve Kaiza before the bandits could do anything else to the man he had come to rescue. It would reflect poorly on the Orange Legion if he allowed any harm to befall the man they had set out to rescue. Now he was forced to wait for any information on the mission. Word has reached me that they approach now through the streets. His centurion answered him almost immediately and Naruto paused for a moment. Silence reigned in the tent and he could dimly hear the roars of voices resound through the streets. Nowhere near was it enough to make out actual words but it was enough to know just how much Kaiza meant to the people of Wave. The same people that would sooner rather than later live under the flag of the Uzumaki Empire and the standard of the Orange Legion's third cohort. You seem troubled Preter, why is that? Do you not hear the voices of the people Centurion? Naruto looked towards where the third's blank standard rested near one of the tent's walls and then to where the Orange Legion swirl rested over it. They will treat us like liberators for now but the love of the people is a truly fickle thing. Kaiza, while we will be seen as conquerors at the worst, will forever be loved if what I hear is truly how these people feel for him. Do you wish for the men to eliminate him? No. A smile crossed his face. I have a plan for him Centurion. Within the hour, the Centurion had left and a new man joined him in the tent. Hmm, so the old man really sent you to get me out of there? The man before him, his wrists rubbed raw from where they had been chained and bruises running across his body, was easy to guess the identity of. He so easily recognized the man as Kaiza, partly thanks to the picture he had seen and partly thanks to the grin the man he had before him held despite all he had been through. The photographed man in the frame had the exact same smile. Where did that old drunk get the money to hire a jonin from, Kanoha right? Hmm, your praise will not faze me Kaiza. Naruto chuckled as he leaned against the table he had set up in his tent like always. I am a genin, one destined for greatness, but a genin nonetheless. He hired my team and I for a bodyguard assignment some time ago. We arrived to find you imprisoned by the filth gato employed and sought to save you from such a fate. Around them stood a near dozen Praetorians, the same men who had rescued him from the cellar gato's thugs had thrown him in while they awaited the wretch himself. A brief interrogation of the surviving filth present had revealed the plan one of them had crafted to gato's satisfaction. The reports he received when Kaiza walked out of the cellar, beaten but alive and grinning, and the reactions of the populace proved why such actions would be deemed necessary. A call to arms had swept through the hopeless as if a spark had at last been lit. His Praetorians reported that a near riot had engulfed them, a wall of steel the only thing stopping the villagers from burning the bandits' headquarters to the ground in a mad frenzy. Kaiza was the one to stop it in the end. He called for the people to devote themselves to work on the bridge that was their salvation instead of petty revenge. Kaiza was a powerful man in that regard. He was a rallying point with his demeanor that infected all others. 
He could make the weak unite as one for a common goal, motivate those who would not fight to take up arms, and was a man well loved by all. He commanded respect through sheer admiration and with such a great respect he commanded loyalty without issues. Naruto, despite how much it annoyed him to admit it, could never be like Kaiza. The Orange Legion adored him as their leader, the man who would bring forth the dream of the Uzumaki Empire through any challenges. The Orange Legion saw him as a near god sent forth to lay waste to all those who stood in his way but he was painfully mortal. He was not all-knowing, he was not forever wise, and he was not invincible. He tried to be but a mortal would always remain a mortal no matter what one would try to transcend such a state. Kaiza was different. Naruto knew at the moment he had truly laid eyes on the former prisoner of Gato's thugs. He even knew it, unconsciously, when he heard the voices of the people joined to one cause simply by his presence. Kaiza was a man who was a man. He did not try to be anything great and instead simply did all he could. He did not care for the greater picture beyond the people of Wave. He did not care much for people like Gato beyond Gato himself because the man turned their lands desolate. He fought because he must, not because he enjoyed it. He was a builder and built the world around him to be better than when he had come into it. Kaiza was a man on a near mission to be good and that made him great. Despite all he could try and all he would do, Naruto understood he would never gain the faith or love of the people he would one day rule over with a man like Kaiza able to exist at the same time. So he needed him on his side. At the same time, changes have come to Nami no Kuni, changes I feel you will find to your liking. Fear. It was a brief thing in the eyes of the man in front of him but it was present and it was something sharp blue eyes easily caught. Gato's thugs have been eliminated by the might of the Uzumaki's Empire Orange Legion. We have purged the land of the filth that once plagued it but now we cannot leave it. The third cohort, the men responsible for taking this land back from trash, will remain here but I shall not. I must return to the first, stationed in Kanahagakur, and look to the broader picture of the future of the Uzumaki Empire and not every detail of the present that lies before me. I have a trusted legate responsible for directing the Orange Legion itself but I find myself in need of a new branch of the Uzumaki Empire. One more attuned to battle upon the waves. Enough talk. Kaiza's steel had been drawn in that moment. He no longer cared for speeches or build to the declaration he now knew Naruto would make, the words that would decide the fate of the lands he lived in and sought to protect. Just tell me what you're after and why I'm here already or let me go back to my family. You should learn an appreciation for dramatic timing Kaiza. Naruto let a chuckle escape him and a single hand stopped the Praetorians from advancing and silencing the source of disrespect towards their Praetor. His men were sometimes too devoted but it was still a great thing to have. Regardless, I can agree with you on getting to the point. You have been brought here because I require a vicarious, a leader and voice for Nami no Kuni to prosper under the banner of the Uzumaki Empire and be protected by the standard of the third cohort of my Orange Legion. Blue met black. Steel shined in both. A decision that would decide the fate of Nami no Kuni was to be decided in this tent. Legate. A shout called Sasuke's mind back and his Sharingan turned from the trees in front of him to the clone that now demanded his complete and utter attention. The scouts have returned. Take me to them. He had gotten tired of sitting on watch. It was better to stretch his legs than simply remain watching the motionless trees for non-existent bandits after the purge the Orange Legion's third cohort had unleashed on their filth. You there, take up my watch. He singled out a clone to take over his watch and hurried after the one that had reported to him. He was brought to the center of the camp, a fire the gathering spot and where the scouts downed water and waited for him with helmets cast off their heads. The moment he stepped into the firelight, a dozen or so fists met the armor the Orange Legion wore. Legate. He returned the salute a moment later and searched for the leader of the standing scouts. He could not find the clone he had placed in charge of the latest expedition and his eyes narrowed. He turned to the clone he had named second instead for answers. First he would need to know how their search went and his second priority was for the location of the mission commander. Report your findings scouts. The remaining bandits, those we have pursued since they fled, have joined with a larger force at what we believe to be a stockpile for Gato or even his headquarters. It is unknown as the land was scorched and we could not approach closer while remaining unknown. The commander ordered me to report back with the majority of our expedition while he took two others with him to look for an entry point. 
He ordered a beacon to be thrown into the air an hour after my return to camp. If he or the two others do not answer it then he is to be presumed captured or killed. The scout answered his first and second priority without prompting. He appreciated how well the clones of his century seemed to understand his priorities. It didn't change the fact that the scout commander was foolish. Centurion. His eyes searched for the familiar armor and found it and the clone wearing it striding towards him. He stopped and saluted and was saluted in turn. Prepare to march. Where do we march, Legate? It would be ridiculous to devote a hundred men to battle a force of perhaps thousands. Sasuke looked towards the blank standard that laid pristine above the flames before him. The third cohort had no glory to share with the world yet but would gain it soon before the legate left the battlefield. March the majority of our forces back. I will remain here with the first and see if the scout commander returns. If he does not then I will return with no additions. His red and black eyes looked not only at the centurion but at the clones gathered around him as well. Understand all that? Of course Legate. Nothing else needed to be said as he returned his helmet to its proper place on his head and turned to the gathered men of the century. Century, let's move. Who? The march past the Legate was a single file one as he set his shield against a fallen tree and waited for the hour to be up and for the beacon to be thrown into the air. The first remained with him and settled down to wait with their swords at their sides and their shields standing upright next to them. It seems continuing my pursuit was a mistake after all. Sasuke shook his helmeted head as red and black eyes looked at the floor of the forest before him. I should have waited for reinforcements so I could crush this filth without such humiliation as this. The legate of the Orange Legion unable to advance against simple bandits is disgraceful. He had only his thoughts as company and he already found himself wishing for the hour to be up. Sakura-chan, it is a pleasure as always to witness your beauty personally. Two of her blossom guards saluted her with fist over their hearts and heads bowed as she walked to the door. A third, standing off to the side, stepped forward from against the wall and into her path. We have been instructed by Preter to allow none of the occupants within this home to leave. That includes you as well Sakura-chan. I know. It hadn't taken long to understand Naruto's crush on her had been the source of the Blossom Guard of his Orange Legion. She still didn't know what to feel about his clones defending her at all hours of the day. She knew Naruto had assigned a hundred of his clones to not only guard her but be devoted solely to her wishes. They refused to even listen to Sasuke when he wanted to speak to her in private, someone she had learned held authority second only to Naruto's own over the entire Orange Legion. She still didn't know if they would listen to Naruto himself if she told them not to and didn't want to find out. She still didn't know exactly how she felt towards them being bodyguard but she did know their utter devotion to her frightened her more than it comforted her. I just need to speak with Kakashi Sensei and I know he's outside right now. She offered all three a smile they would describe as heavenly. You can come with me if you want but I really do need to talk to him. Silver Fong does not deserve to look upon your beauty Sakura-chan. She also knew the Orange Legion hated Kakashi even if most held a healthy amount of fear from the sheer destruction he had brought them during the bell test. I will contact the guards outside and instruct them to break position for now. Thank you. She swore she saw him blush from her thanks as he saluted her. He turned his head away from her and pressed a finger to his ear. Blossom guards, Sakura-chan will speak with Silver Fong. First and second is to escort her to him and secure the perimeter. He spoke quietly and quickly and she dimly heard the HOO shouted in response through the doors before he turned back to her. The men will be awaiting you Sakura-chan. The two in front of the door stepped aside when she approached and it was opened from the outside. The daylight momentarily blinded her after being inside for so long so she shielded her watering eyes. When she withdrew them, she couldn't help but grasp at the sight before her. She had been mistaken with her previous thought of a simple hundred clones being part of her blossom guards. They had assembled outside the house before dawn broke and she saw hundreds surrounding the expanded clearing of the house. A ring of burned out fires stretched around the very edge of the perimeter they had created and within it stood ring after ring of Naruto's clones. Their shields were held outwards, swords held in their hands at the outermost layers and behind them clones stood with an almost sea of pylums around them. The innermost rings even held bows, quivers held upright by the ground with their swords at their sides and shields standing before them. Even in front of her twenty clones stood, 
their shields in their arms and swords at their side for now but the moment her shocked form took another step she knew they would encircle her with their weapons at the ready. I feel I should start being worried now. The sheer numbers Naruto had gifted her did slightly worry her now. Sakura-chan. The clones formed twin rows of ten in front of her and one stepped forward and his fist came over his armored heart as he bowed his head to her. We have been chosen to escort you to Silver Fong and then return with you here. That's, nice. She nodded to him as she stepped forward and just like she thought the clones instantly formed around her, shields enveloping her in a moving cage of steel and flesh. They kept pace with her seamlessly, needing no comment to either slow down or speed up. The circles in front of her opened and she stepped through them without a word, the lines closing behind her. The efficiency of the Orange Legion and the Blossom Guards could never be understated it seemed. They seemed more machines than just the clones they really were. Kakashi waited for her in the trees. Without even a look the clones with her dispersed themselves to wait among the foliage around the two. They were out of eyesight but not out of earshot. What she said would be remembered by them. There's no need to worry about the clone Sakura. Kakashi stood in front of her, his hands in his pocket with his one visible eye looking into the trees around them. There's a Jinjutsu over us. You're complaining about the workload I've given you on the mission. I'm ignoring you. Thank you Kakashi-sensei. She allowed her shoulders to fall. She was glad she was alone with her Jonin sensei for now. They watch me all the time. I know they're here because Naruto wants me to stay safe, but I feel more like, like, a prisoner. Kakashi perfectly summed up what she felt as he took his hands out his pockets and crossed them over his chest. His single eye roved over her armor and took in the presence of the sword at her side. The more he saw it, the more he figured it was ceremonial above all else. Sakura was never supposed to fight it seemed. Your sword, how often do you get to use it? I have a practice one I use. Sakura glanced down at the weapon before looking away. Let's not talk about anything Naruto related sensei. I need to ask you something important about the mission. Then you should do it soon, those clones are getting pretty restless with me ignoring you. Kakashi put his back against the tree behind him and waited for the genin to speak. Zabuza Momoichi, is he really going to show up? Yeah, he'll probably show himself in a few more hours. Thank you, Kakashi-sensei. You should head back inside now Sakura. Make sure the family doesn't get in any trouble while I'm out here watching. I'll try to talk to Naruto and Sasuke and see if their plan worked and if Kaiza is still alive. Actually, there's one more thing I want to ask you Kakashi-sensei. Go ahead. A few minutes later, Sakura walked back into the house with her blossom guard sealing the perimeter yet again. Word spread of Silver Fong's disrespect to the beautiful Sakura-chan and more than once the thought to make him pay for such a crime passed through the mind of the centurion in charge of the men of the Orange Legion before him. He withheld himself but one day Silver Fong would pay. His crime had not been forgotten or forgiven by the Legion, they were merely recorded. Eventually the debt would be paid and Silver Fong would face the fate of all threats to the Uzumaki Empire. Praetorians. Naruto emerged from his tent with Kaiza at his side. A settlement had been reached at last in their argument. Now all that was needed was to announce the decision to the men gathered before him. The Orange Legion had claimed a great victory that needed to be recorded this day. Who? Acknowledged the vicarious of Nami no Kuni. Who? As one the Praetorians assembled before him turned from Praetor to the Vicarious of Nami no Kuni. Vicarious Kaiza. Vicarious Kaiza. Vicarious Kaiza. Each cry of the name was met with one of their fists striking above their armored hearts before being extended out towards the man who would bear the responsibility of Nami no Kuni's prosperity under the banner of the Uzumaki Empire. Vicarious Kaiza. Vicarious Kaiza. Vicarious Kaiza. The call went out six times through the Praetorians before silence settled as their hands returned to their sides and took hold of the hilt of their blades. They arranged themselves into marching formation, knowing the desire of Praetor to announce the news to the man responsible for his presence in Nami no Kuni. So, the old man really did come here drunk? Kaiza was rather easygoing despite the responsibility placed on his shoulders. His arms were behind his head as he walked with Naruto, the two moving side by side with the Praetorians around them both. A solid wall of steel separated them from the citizens of Nami no Kuni who looked on. 
Kaiza waved at most of them, smiled at others, and shouted brief words to some before turning back to Naruto. That sounds like him. He hasn't exactly been in the best shape since Gato started, telling him how much he disagreed with his bridge. He's been on the bottle ever since to deal with it. When people kept leaving or disappearing, well he didn't spend many nights sober. When the bodies started showing up on the bridge he got worse. Kaiza stopped talking for a moment. He swallowed a sudden lump in his throat and briefly his head was bowed to the weight of his past memories. Naruto was about to speak when Kaiza rose from his burden and black eyes looked up towards the clear sky above them. I started taking over most of the project, was really about to lay down the actual bridge when Gato's thugs showed up and chased most of the workers I could gather off. They were lucky they came at the end of the day. Kaiza's hands balled into fists and Naruto appreciated the fury in his eyes. I would have taken anything I could have grabbed and killed those bastards if they tried to stop me before I finished. I've heard it took Gato's whole gang to bring you down, is that true? Naruto's question was met with a brief and loud chuckle from Kaiza. It was half of them actually. I ended up throwing most of them off the bridge in the end so the other half had to show up when I was done and drag me to Gato. Kaiza laughed again as he remembered his capture and turned to Naruto. Can you believe most of them couldn't even swim? Why live in a place like this when you can't do something that simple? Bandits are filth. Gato's thugs are no better than them, they only relied on the tactics of a bully. Naruto let his own laughter join Kaiza for a moment. They fell swiftly to my orange legion with such a thing worthless against my men. I figured they couldn't handle much beyond normal people. Kaiza sighed as they came to the bridge off in the distance. It was trashed, pieces torn away, the sturdy lumber sawed off and hauled away, and bits of it seemed to have been set aflame but the waves had put them out. He saw his work almost destroyed and his face turned grim. They couldn't destroy a bridge made by decent folks either. My legion will see to it that the bridge is completed before I leave. Naruto's words were only met by a nod from Kaiza. His eyes remained locked on the bridge ahead of them. That bridge shouldn't be causing so much trouble but it does anyway. Kaiza's face swiftly morphed into a smile despite the state of the bridge. Guys like Gato, his thugs, and anyone who tries to keep people down can't stand a bridge like that. Why is that? Naruto didn't see what Kaiza saw. He saw a sturdily built bridge that his legion could easily not only complete but improve upon. He only saw another achievement for the glorious Uzumaki Empire. Kaiza saw it very differently. He saw something much more in the bridge that no one but the people of Nami no Kuni would ever see. Only people who had suffered like them to people like Gato could understand why the bridge was so important. I admit, the bridge is well built for the material you have but it is no grand achievement. That's where you're wrong Naruto. That bridge, anything like that bridge, carries with it the simple thing called hope. Kaiza stepped forward, the Praetorians opening their formation and allowing him to gaze at the still standing fruit of his labor for a moment longer before they continued on. When we at last complete it, Nami no Kuni will be free of Gato's influence and at last be allowed to prosper like it once did. That bridge, things like that bridge, represents what anyone with two arms and the will to work can do. It shows people don't have to stand to bullies and thugs like Gato when they have the will to build something to make the world around them a bit better. That bridge is something that can't be destroyed no matter how many axes go at it, how many fires they set, and no matter how much damage they try to do. That bridge stands for hope. That's why I call it the Bridge of Hope you know. Kaiza let out one last laugh as they entered the forest path. Naruto did not join in but a grin crossed his lips. Hope, such a fragile little thing. As much as you try to hold up the people of this land, my land now, you can't ignore how weak they are. You can't ignore just how weak hope really is in the end. Gato couldn't crush the hope of the people but you couldn't rally them with it either. Hope would make them wish for someone else to save you when Gato decided to drag you out before them. Hope would make them wish for someone to be strong enough to stop Gato when he told them what he would do to you. Hope would make them wish for things to change when he cut off your arms. Hope is useless by itself. You should know that by now Kaiza. Naruto did not let his thoughts be heard or vocalize them to the man he had named the Vicarious of Nami no Kuni. He didn't need to tell Kaiza any of it because the man should know how useless hope really could be when he wasted away for a week in the cellar of the thug's hideout. He should know how useless it was to rely on people, untrained and undisciplined, to do anything but hope someone else does something. 
Kaiser knew how unreliable the people of Nami no Kuni really were even if he would never admit it. His hopes would be dashed then. Interesting name you chose for it Kaiser. His only comment was towards the name of the bridge. Ever considered changing it to something else? He would need to talk him into naming it something less insulting to the Uzumaki Empire. The Great Naruto Bridge had a nice ring to it after all. First. Move. The shout of the legate reached the camp as the first of his personal century rushed into the ring of embers that were once mighty fires before the legate himself burst through the foliage. All of you form ranks, now. Who? The soldiers of the Uzumaki Empire's Orange Legion did not like Sasuke Uchiha but they respected him as legate so followed his orders. For centuries worth of soldiers complied and he fell into the center of the line with his shield and sword held at the ready. Take a century and wrap around us, hit them from the side on my order. Sasuke shouted orders to the centurion in charge of his personal century and 100 clones rushed to follow the centurion and the legate turned to another centurion. When they strike, move the second wing to box them in. Arms. Swords were drawn from sides near the front of the formation of shields and flesh and bows were notched further back as clones late to follow the order rushed into the rear of the formation. Whatever happens, no one is to fall back. Who? The Orange Legion did not ever run. They would show the legate why the Uzumaki Empire could stand strong with its lands watched by their vigilant eyes, guarded with their shields and swords, and forever directing the will of many to what it needed. Preter's dream was their dream. He would not fall back. They would not fall back. Naruto is going to kill me if I lose here. Sasuke's grip tightened on the hilt of his blade, his shield shook ever so slightly before the Uchiha glared his arm into submission to his will. Red and black eyes locked onto the world of darkness he had ventured into far too deeply before he steadied himself. Artillery. Who? The order was a strange one to issue without any enemy in sight but all those not in the first two rows of the formation either drew back their bows or arched back to throw Pylum forward. Both projectiles had explosive tags tied to them and would serve the same purpose. Fire. Who? The forest the Orange Legion's third cohort had made camp in front of were torn away without pause in the resulting bombardment. Splinters turned into deadly shrapnel slammed into the steel of the shields that held without moving or denting. In that moment, they were not individual but one. One stood against the bombardment of shrapnel. One refused to give any ground to it. One turned back into many once the shrapnel had been averted and now the Orange Legion merely waited for what had disturbed the legate into a panic. Kill them! For centuries of the third cohort stood at the ready. 400 men held their swords and shields at the ready in the front and notched arrows in the rear of the formation. 400 soldiers held the line when what had to be a thousand bandits slammed against their shields. First, push. At the order of the legate, the wall of steel advanced with a shout from the clones that held it together with the strength they possessed not an individual but a single thing in that moment. Swords lung forward from their sides and passed the shield to draw the blood of the filth they battled against. Push. Who? The wall of steel advanced again, the fangs of the Orange Legion lashing out with a thirst for blood that would find itself quenched with that of the bandits before them. Shields threw more off their feet, threw them into the masses of filth behind them, and cast them back as the third cohort could not be stopped. They advanced and the bandits threw themselves against them in a mad fury. They met disciplined ranks that slaughtered them as easy as cattle. Not a single clone ever took a step back. Hesitation was not a thing in the heat of battle. Retreat was not an option. The line would hold. The line would advance. Death would claim their foes without an end in sight. The legate was with them at the front and his blade never seemed to stop moving. His shield acted almost as a beacon for wave after wave of filth to charge towards him and make futile attempts to kill the man they blamed for their stranglehold on Nami no Kuni being shattered. They wanted him to pay with blood. You think you can come to the legate unchallenged? A centurion cleaved through one when he decided to lunge towards Sasuke. His blade was death as it descended and the filth below him did not rise. He turned back into the line and from then on watched the legate's blind spot as he fell to the heat of battle. All who carried with them the dream of Praetor eventually fell to the lust for blood battle spawned among the legion but core discipline remained. The arms bearing the blade may shake with excitement but the shield arm remained steady. The line did not break. Pylum. 
His voice reached them over the screams of the dying and the roar of the legion as they took the price they had deemed the bandits must pay for their presence in waves. His shield joined the others as a solid wall of steel. The second row advanced, their shields joining the first and a wall of steel proved impassable to the bandits that threw themselves against it. Their swords ripped through flesh and left them to die against the steel of the Orange Legion's shields. Who? The Legate's command was followed as another bombardment was unleashed by the strong arms of the Orange Legion's third cohort. The mad charge of the bandits had ruined them before the battle had even began as the Orange Legion would never fall to such trash. The Legate pushed forward and the lines pushed forward with them. Another wave of pylum, these normal deadly projectiles, soared over the head of the soldiers of the third cohort and once again ripped apart the ranks of the bandits. It's time. Sasuke pulled back ever so slightly and the blade of his sword crashed against his shield. It was heard when a dozen clones took up the same call before rejoining the battle in full force. A beacon was pressed into his hand as his sword went to his side. He flung it into the air and it blazed with enough light to outshine the sun for the briefest of moments. Century charge. One voice called out. Who? One hundred voices answered. From the side came a hundred blades that ripped apart the unaware bandits that continued to break upon the shields of the legion like water on rock. Almost immediately, a bloody path was opened when another barrage of artillery ripped apart the bandits in mass on the other side. A sentry swept out from the line and joined Sasuke's personal sentry on a parallel attack on the other side. The battle had now truly transformed into nothing but a slaughter of filth. Legate, there is a message for you from Praetor. Once the bandits had truly been shattered and two centuries marched forth to finish them off for good, Sasuke was approached by the centurion Naruto had placed in charge of the camp when he discovered he had left. Out with it then. Sasuke sat down at the dead embers of the main fire, his bloody sword leaning against the log he sat on and his blood-smeared shield propped up by the log at his side. I think I can correctly guess what he's told you to tell me. Praetor ordered his words be repeated as they were spoken. Cease your advance. Withdraw to camp. Await my appearance. Duh. The centurion's blue eyes locked with red and black and Sasuke saw something within them that he couldn't quite place. You are not to leave the camp until Praetor arrives. The third cohort has orders to keep you here by force if it is seen as necessary. Of course you are. Sasuke sighed as he pulled his helmet off his head and sat it down on the log next to him. I won't be going anywhere anytime soon Centurion. If you so wish to do so go inform Praetor that I await his judgment for my rash and foolish actions before the embers of the bonfire. I shall leg it. The centurion fist covered his armored heart and Sasuke mirrored the salute from his seated position. As the centurion left him to his thoughts, Sasuke considered the day more of a victory than anything else. He had commanded the third cohort in the successful and complete eradication of the bandits that made the mistake to roam the lands claimed by the Uzumaki Empire, his casualties against such filth were relative low, and dawn had broken after most of the land had been claimed by the third. There was more than one thing to be proud of in the achievements of the Orange Legion in Nami no Kuni. Victory belonged to the Legion, its legate, and Praetor this day. No battles had been lost in the great campaign through Nami no Kuni. None of the bandits had managed to break the lines of the third cohort and none remained in large enough numbers to ever rally again. The full sweep of Nami no Kuni would be left to whatever cohort of the Legion Naruto ended up assigning to the newest lands of the Uzumaki Empire. I at least kept my promise somewhat. Sasuke looked up at the sky above him and took in the warm rays of the sun. Dawn breaks on a new day in the land of waves. The day the Orange Legion claimed it for his Uzumaki Empire. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.